Episode 75 of White Heat has arrived, presented by Godzilla Media and sponsored by our friends over at Mohawk Honda and Johnstone Supply. Temperatures are dropping, which means the need for heat is rising, and you need to make sure that your heating system, your furnace is in good working order, which means you need to get a hold of our friends over at Johnstone Supply in Troy. and ask them about all of the parts you may need to fix your furnace, all at the best brands and at great prices like Goodman, Fujitsu, and Westinghouse. Or if you just need a brand new heating system for the entire living space, not a problem because Johnstone Supply and Troy can help with that too. Go and talk to George, who's been with Getting There with Gaz in previous episodes with our friend Tom Gaz, and he'll be able to take care of you or any of the guys like Kev, James, and Bird. They'll also be able to help out to make sure that you don't have to deal with freezing temperatures inside your home throughout the winter. Give them a call at 518-272-5922 or visit Johnstone Supply at 2600 6th Avenue in Troy. Make sure your heating system is in good working order so you're not left out in the cold this winter with Johnstone Supply in Troy. 518-272-5922, 2600 6th Avenue in Troy or visit them at johnstonesupply.com. I'm Brian Katie. That's JJ Alexander. Good sir. How are you? I had to turn my heat on last night. This is bullshit. We're stubborn. It was 70 on Saturday. I know. I know. We got up to, I think we were like low 60s on Saturday, but yeah, I get you. I suppose we're supposed to get like at least a coating to an inch. Oh, now it's up to an inch to three inches of snow coming in Tuesday night through Wednesday afternoon. So really in the grand scheme of things, it's not much, but. That's what you get for living in upstate New York. Still the first snowfall of the year. Yeah, you live. Yeah, I know. I know. Good for you. Good for you. Just wait until that coaster hits you in like January. Anyways, uh, you know, you know how it works. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. So let's just dive in with because we got some stuff to get into. Maybe we'll have a guest. (laughs) We'll have a guest pop in who's. We're supposed to. Entertaining in his own right. So we'll see how that works out. But in the meantime, first off, um, nothing to really update on New Japan, except they did launch their Tamashi brand in New Zealand over the weekend with two live shows. From everything everything from the looks of it, it went very well. Only hiccup they had was that Jeff Cobb was not able to make the shows. Um, I'm going to double check and make sure it wasn't an injury real quick. So bear with me for a second, but uh, other than that, everything went, went off without a hitch uh, for the New Zealand shows. Uh, Jeff Cobb absent. Uh, let's see here. Uh, just says unable. he was unable to appear due to personal reasons for those two nights, so um, hopefully it's not anything too serious, but it, in, in, regardless, uh, the shows went off very well, and uh, they were well received, so good on them, and we'll see what happens with this brand going forward. Yeah. Uh, Moving on to Impact, real quick. Well, that was real quick, I should say, for New Japan. Um, their show, their TV show back on Thursday, Killer Kelly beat a job named Sandra Moon in before the Impact. And then they opened the show. Joe Hendry beating Brian Myers to become the new digital media champion. Well, then. They're just trying to figure out. Shouldn't have that on him. been on before, before the Impact. Technically, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's also Joe Hendry, and they probably just want, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, then, uh, then this dude that's with Giselle Shaw, Jay Vidal. Yeah. Something like that. I guess he, he created a promo video that wasn't really a very good promo video uh, for Giselle Shaw ahead of uh, uh, challenging Jordan Grace for the knockouts world title in the main, main event that night. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Yeah. I'm trying to see who this is. Is somebody interesting? No, I'm just trying to see who this is, like, who this guy is, Jai Vidal. Oh. Because, uh... Oh, apparently he's one of Gangrel's students. Just started last year. 
Okay. Um, he yep. might want to have gone for a different name, especially because he just started. Because when I think of the last name Vidal, I think of Nacho Vidal, and I wouldn't want to have that association. I was going to say it might be more. Well, I don't know. I know that he made his TV debut last November uh, and he, when he jobbed out in a match on Impact against Eric Young. So he's been in and out for about a year or so. Right. Right, but I'm just so for those uninformed, uh, Nacho Vidal is a uh, is a pro- has was a prominent name in the pornography industry for many years, um, as a producer and director and performer. And just last year, he kind of got caught up in a whole bunch of weird shit going on. Um, like I'm trying to remember the I, I I can I can pull it up right now because I remember I. I messaged a friend of mine about it saying, did you see this shit going on with Nacho? Arrested after man dies during toad venom ritual. Yeah, that was it. Toad venom ritual. Yeah, like, you know, how, like, because there's like the, there, there's the venomous frogs and, you know, you, you lick the toad and you get high right. and all that stuff. And they're like, there, there was, right. there's like Santeria rituals around using the toad venom. It's, it's a whole like pharmacopoeia type thing. And yeah, he was implicated in a guy dying during one of those and a whole bunch of, shit. basically like Nacho Vidal's stock really like went downhill quick. So I would try to not use the name Vidal. <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay. The more you know. Um, then we get Eric Young, uh, I guess, officially anointing Khan and Angels as part of the Violent by Design, whatever that is. Uh, then Trey Miguel beats Mike Bailey by DQ. Uh, what? What? Someone must have done a run in to screw Mike Bailey. No. No. So here's here's how it reads. Now again, I'm go again, I didn't watch the show uh, right, right. fully admit, but I'm reading the summary from the impact website itself. So Miguel hits a poison run, sending Bailey crash to the outside. Bailey connects with a springboard moon salt over the top to the floor. Mm-hmm. Bailey counters a sunset flip, then drives his knees into the chest of Miguel. Oh, okay. Um, all right, so yes, okay. So Kenny King was apparently ringside. I didn't, I, I didn't catch this. Okay, okay. So Kenny King was ringside apparently, threw popcorn at Bailey, who had eliminated him from the tournament prior, right? Right, and then King threw Miguel into the steel steps to cause Bailey to get DQ'd. Yeah, so Trey Miguel won by DQ over Mike Bailey. Now Miguel's in the finals because of Kenny King being a douchebag, yeah, basically. Um, then we get a, uh, Jessica reflecting on her loss the week before to Samantha, Savannah Evans, Rosemary and Ty Valkyrie then come in and say she has a chance to make it up by facing Tasha Steeles next week, um, before the Death Dolls defend their knockouts tag titles against Steeles and Evans at Overdrive, which is this coming Friday. Uh, then a Kenny King backstage promo, yada yada. Bullpinder beats uh, Impact newcomer G Sharp in singles action. Uh, then we get Rhino telling Josh Alexander backstage that he's known Blu ray for 20 years and that he's a real piece of shit. We're still going with that, I guess. Um, and Eddie backstage with Alicia says Honor No More is dead after he buried PCO in the desert last week. I forgot that was a thing. Uh, God almighty. Uh, Mickey James beats Chelsea Green in what I believe was technically her last match. We just we so, kind of discussed this on and off. Might so not now, be. I don't know. Yeah, so now word is like she, like, there was a someone jumped the gun on that whole thing of her getting signed and so now it may not even be a thing yeah i i I don't know it's weird but either way um kelsey loses 
uh, thanks to Taylor Wilde making sure Deanna Prowse didn't get involved during the match. So there's that. Um, ba -ba -ba. Macklin's looking for Scott Demore backstage. Dreamer confronts Macklin. Uh, and then Macklin says Dreamer was shell of his former self. So Dreamer. The hell? Okay. So Macklin and uh so Macklin and Dream looks like are gonna have a match next week, maybe? Or maybe later in the night. I don't know. We'll see in a second. Uh boy Ray beat Sicky Dice. Stop me if you think that's a surprise. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh so Boy Ray beat Sicky Dice after the match, Moose attacks Bully from behind. And then Spears Bully Ray through a table. Um, why? Because they're facing each other at overdrive this weekend. Uh, then <laughs> Sammy Callahan abducts one of <laughs> v Sammy Callahan abducts one of Eric Young's hooded followers and lays out a challenge for a new type of match against Eric Young. Oh, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Are you ready to hear this? I bet it's not new. Oh, it's well, I don't know if it's it's new for impact. I don't know if it's new new. So for this week's episode of Impact that's coming up Thursday, Sammy Callahan faces Eric Young one on one in what's been labeled Death Machines Double Jeopardy match. <clears throat> and the rule is simple. You can't go for the pinfall and the victory until you make your opponent bleed. Yep. Yep. You heard that right. If you're going to force juice, why wouldn't you do that on a pay-per-view? Because reasons. Um, after failing to end the career of Mickey James earlier in the night, Chelsea Green tells Deanna Peraza that she's going home. Sure. Um, ba, ba, ba. so then during so uh, then Bully Ray lays out the challenge that his match with Moose be a tables match at Overdrive. Then they show a promo video of Kazarian. Then they get to the main event of the night. Jordan Grace retains the knockouts title over Giselle Shaw. But then we go off the air with Jordan being laid out the top of the ramp by a steel chair from Masha Slamovich. <clears throat> Why? Um, we already did this. I, I don't know. But that's not how we actually end the show. My apologies. We end the show after that attack with uh, PCO rising from his grave in the desert. <laughs> I'm going to guess it probably looked a lot like when they would have Undertaker come out of his graves. But I'm not even going to bother watching Right. Anyways, um, I mean, you buried him in the desert. It's sand. It's easy to get out of. You only bury someone when they're dead. Right. <laughs> uh, so this coming week, like I mentioned, we got the double jeopardy thing of a bobber thingy. Mm -hmm. Um, everybody's banned from ringside, by the way, between Sammy and Eric Young. Macklin versus Dreamer in an old school rules match, whatever the fuck that means. Uh, Jessica against Tasha Steele's one on one. And then a four way between the Machine Guns, Aussie Open, uh, Ace Austin and Chris Bay, and then Shira and Singh. Why? I don't know. Reasons. Uh, then PJ Black and Black Taurus take on each other in the other semifinal of the X Division title tournament. Meanwhile, Overdrive, that event that I mentioned coming up on Friday. Here's what we are looking at so far with the card. Uh, Kazarian taking his option C against Josh Alexander for the world title. Um, Jordan Grace is going to defend her knockouts world title against Masha Slamovich in a last knockout standing match. I feel like I've just seen that recently. Oh, wait, yeah. that's right. Bianca Bailey and Rhea. Right? Fuck me. Uh, Boy Ray Moose in a tables match. The finals of the X Division Championship Tournament, which will be Trey Miguel versus either Black Taurus or PJ Black. 
Heath and Rhino defending the Impact World Tag Titles against Cardona and Myers. Death Dolls defending the Knockouts Tag Titles against Tasha Steeles and Savannah Evans. Mickey James versus Taylor Wilde. That is the card for that show. So three, four, five, seven matches it looks like. Yeah, seven officially booked as of right now. Thoughts? Eh. Eh. Another digital impact special. We know this isn't going to be Mickey James's last match. I don't I honestly don't think that they would put the title on Kazarian. I just don't see it. Um it's probably going to be it's probably going to be Trey Miguel and uh and PJ Black in the finals for the X Division title. Which it feels like they're pushing PJ Black, which I don't agree with. Is PJ officially signed by them, or is he just their per diem right now? I'm not sure. Because I don't remember them ever announcing him as an official sign official signing. Me neither. Hmm. That is odd. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I mean, the the way things have laid out themselves, it pretty much, it pretty much set itself up for whoever who was winning the Trey Miguel, uh, Mike Bailey match to win the tournament. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I I don't know. That's that's very odd. I don't know about the PJ Black situation. Yeah. But that being said, would you like to grab your torch and pitchforks mm-hmm. and get your notes out? Mm-hmm. I just re I just re skimmed through Dynamite before we started, so it's fresh in my mind. Well, I watched it this morning, so it's fresh in my mind too. Oh boy, here we go! I I I I oh god, um, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Wrong show. Yeah, I know. All right, so. They're opening the show with the eight-man tag, FTR and uh, the Acclaimed versus Gun Club and Swerve and Our Swerve. Glory. Uh, before the match even starts, Billy Gunn round, runs out during the Acclaimed's intro and tries attacking Swerve before the match starts. Billy gets sent to the back by the referee as well as BJ Whitmer, who was ringside, apparently. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, one observation I made within 30 seconds of this match, Gun Club has HBK gear, but beefcake skills. Yep. Love Brutus, but he was all he was all charisma and yeah. very little yeah. Matt skills. <laughs> yeah. Without so, having their father out there to guide them, they're just they're lost. Right, right. I mean, obviously, they're not calling shit. They're letting their, you know. Right. But it just kind of scares me the idea of them of them allowing Bowens or, uh, fuck. What, um, why am I blanking on Bowens' tag partner's name? Caster. Caster, thank you. Um, like I get you allowing Dax or Cash to call your your match, but uh, I don't know. um. FTR and they claim beat Gun Club and Sword and are going eight man action. Subtle thing, not that wasn't so subtle once it was fucking mentioned by. I, th- I don't know if it was was it Sockface or was it Tony? I think it was Tony Shivani who recognizes during the entrance for Sword and Our Glory. Sword was going for the fist bump. Keith Lee was like, "Nah, cause nah." Didn't fist bump him back. Trying to focus on the. Not so subtle subtleties that they're trying uh-huh. to do between them. And uh, having the fucking guns try to do the fucking FTRs finish, just don't. This isn't a video game. You don't you don't steal people's finish. Like you you steal a guy's finisher when you're like eight matches into a feud and it's on a pay per view. You don't randomly fucking do it in a fucking mixed fucking tag match on in the on the, in the fucking curtain jerk of the free TV. Right. Right. Should we try bringing him in? Yeah, let's. If he's here. Does he not have a camera? Is that what the problem is? Does he not have a camera? I thought he has a camera. Hold on, let me. 
We have a guest. He says one moment. In the background. Okay. All right. So we're waiting on that. Um, <clears throat> in the meantime, I'll just bring this up real quick um, because I know – um, we're going to mention the card later on, but I'll just bring it up now just to kill time for a second. Uh, Acclaim versus Swerve in Our Glory for the tag titles at full gear this weekend. Mm-hmm. The way everything is laying out, I would assume Acclaim retains and shit go, breaks down between Keith and Swerve. Right. That'd be the most logical move. Uh huh. But again, AEW is not exactly logical, so. Yeah. The other direction they could go, which is not the smart direction or the most obvious direction, but it's another direction if they just want to do a swerve, bro, is Keith Lee embracing Swerve's point of view yeah. and them going over dirty, over acclaimed. Again, doesn't uh, make sense. Doesn't make as much sense as option A, but. Nothing does in AEW. It, right. It's still an option regardless. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's just. <laughs> they don't know what to do with their tag team division because it's the Bucks who book the tag division and the Bucks don't care because the Bucks are more focused on putting the fucking fake trios belts on themselves. So, you know, reasons. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a second, I think. Um then we get a clip of MJF from his oh oh god oh god there's video oh god oh god oh god oh boy all right all right before before it so before we get into discussing the rest of the AEW from the week and losing our fucking minds <laughs> we have we have a man that's gonna be joining us right now that thinks ABV is a bullshit number and doesn't exist he probably doesn't even know what ABV is. No. Oh, he does. No. <laughs> we have a man. And don't try talking yet. You're not on yet. I'll click you in. Don't don't fucking work. <laughs> I, see him freak, I see him freaking out backwards like, ah, ah, fuck off. You're not on yet. Um, We have a man who has Wood in his name, but don't call him Woody because he's not from fucking Toy Story. We have a man who, let's just say, Fuck it, let's just bring him in. He's the man of the hour, the tower of power, too sweet to be sour for interspecies wrestling, and one of my the minds behind Dissension Pro Wrestling with Mr. Alexander, the one, the only, the lovely, the wonderful, Mr. Ed Wood. Ed! You had to make that so gay. You, you just did. <laughs> <laughs> and and before well, any and before any lefties who I love and adore get upset, I'm gay, so I can say that. <laughs> oh my god. That introduction was the worst. I'm sorry for being late. I, you know, I've been sick. I was really thinking I was over it, and I was. Um, but you know how you just wake up and you have that like congestion and like everything's just coming up. And when you're at the tail end of a cold, you know, it's running down your face. It's right when you really want to just go like. Yep. And um, I was at that point, and um, I took longer in the restroom and everything, trying to pretty up. If that makes sense. <laughs> that that's I was gonna try to sneak by with no camera, but you caught me, so I had to load up my camera. And for you, for you other um, LGBT folks, I am gonna be eating a banana, so feel free to watch. <laughs> I haven't had my. I woke up at seven thirty a.m. and um, I uh, I was up for a bit, but then I just fell back asleep hard because mm-hmm. you know Tuesdays especially with this expansion coming for those of you that don't know um i'm a huge uh world of warcraft gamer i've been playing since launch that's 18 years this month actually and um i am the guy from south park that has no life um so uh there the expansion is coming out on the 28th and uh we have to um they do weekly updates to start putting things in the game like the new playable race and and uh, new talent trees and stuff and today's one of those days so it's uh it's a 7 a.m to 3 p.m pacific time uh uh maintenance so you know i have nothing to do so i was like well why not go on the show you know (laughs) no no i love you guys i love you guys i I'm glad uh, to be here. 
and um, and talk about our upcoming show. Uh, I, I just so any listeners that are fans of WWE, uh, AEW, um, Ring of Honor, anything that they discuss, just so you guys understand. I have not watched AEW since I tried to watch one episode. I really did. I'm look. I'm looking you right in the eyes. I tried. I tried, and I couldn't. And I'm not shitting on it like some people do. I just the the way it was booked and the way it flowed. Like I don't shit on anybody for you know having a career. The boys are out there making money. Good. But the the show that I watched, the way it flowed, I just wanted to. Oh my god! I just watched um, the Million Judge Mary, uh, um, whatever her name Million, and this the, the woman was getting sued because she's a dog watcher, um, and the dog jumped out of the window on her that she was watching, and that's how I feel. That's how I felt that day when I was watching AEW. I wanted to jump out the window. It, it's just it drove me nuts. Like this dog watcher, this dog watcher was driving this dog nuts, so it killed itself instead. But um, WWE, I've just, I, I have always had this love hate relationship with WWE. It's like a circular thing where I really, really love it and then I just can't stand it. I'm in one of those I can't stand it modes. So if they start really? rambling on about, well, I, you know, if it's something good going on, um, uh, booking wise or storyline wise, let me know because I'll watch. But okay. as the last couple of times I watched, I, well, and, and, and to, put it squarely on what it is i've only watched i only watched like the uh, uh pay-per-views so there's been some awful pay-per-views i thought i forgot yesterday wasn't there the saudi arabian one or whatever that was, that was last saturday before. yeah oh okay um so um i can't I really how you tried looking lovingly into my eyes as you bit that <laughs> So what's up, guys? I missed uh, the first half hour. My apologies. That's all right. We just we we're, we're doing our usual recaps of stuff. We're in the middle of recapping AEW right now, so you can okay, play I'll along. Listen. You can play <laughs> along, and uh, you can give input as we go go along and and uh, 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 try to talk about the positives that it really doesn't have. But yeah, <laughs> I'll just look up, I'll just look up the AEW uh, dirt sheets. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> that works. Basically. Um... The, the first, the beginning of this show was recapping Impact's TV. So you literally missed nothing. The, or, oh, or, my God. You know. Yeah. Did you not realize that when I went over the list of wrestling companies that I am not watching at the moment, <laughs> I completely left that out? I didn't even know that was As did most thing. people. <laughs> I, yeah, I didn't. You know, I bet I if you asked know. 95% of American wrestling fans, they wouldn't know what TV channel they're broadcast on. So it's okay. I, 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 isn't it on Pluto or something? like Access. Access? Oh, really? Oh, I they're, they're, Pluto. so their back catalog is on Pluto. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah. Oh, um, now You're half right. Now, who's <laughs> running that now? Is Corrigan still running that, or no, no, no? Demore is running it. Okay. Um, I know, and he's running NWA. Corrigan's running NWA. Yeah, we're gonna and, get to that. Oh, into the ground. Into that. That. He's running that into the ground, right? Okay, yeah. Uh huh. Oh God. We're gonna get okay. to that. Okay. Okay. Oh okay. yeah. Oh, we're gonna get to NWA. Well, don't you fucking we'll get to that right after we finish AEW. Probably it's easier. Okay, carry on then. I will let you do your thing and enjoy listening, getting caught up on these uh, big events. Uh huh. <sighs> All right. So th- after that opening match on Dynamite, we had a clip of MJF that was very clearly not during the podcast that they yeah. were watching it from because a I watched that podcast. There's never a part in any of their interviews where they ever have the person looking directly into the camera not the fucking hosts right um and and b just it i uh, was obviously like a t-ball serve up for him to just panter on right and it was um, there so they could say mjf is on the show even though he wasn't fucking there in person <laughs> and just well, so he was there in person to... he was definitely there in person because the background that was behind mjf was from their studio uh, but i just mean as far as like they need to they, they need to keep viewers on by saying MJF is there, but then they show a pre-tape VTR and then they're like, okay, it's done. And people are oh, like, right, I'm right, changing right. the fucking channel. All right, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Because he's like, the only he thing worth watching on there. Oh, all right, he wasn't there. Okay, I see what you mean. Right. Um, but yeah, so it was a pre-tape clip of him from um that was clearly taped aside from his appearance on the actual part of my take podcast, part of the Barstool Sports brand. Uh Ed, are you a fan of Barstool Sports at all? I am oh, you know, I um, they recently did some, uh, no, I can't say that I am the, not, you know what them, I mean, as an organization, probably, uh, yes. Um, depending on what day it is, 
but the actual <laughs> the, the the owner guy, I don't. There's something about him that I cannot stand. Dave Portnoy. Um, Yes. Uh, was he the guy with the pizza and the, yeah. the manager? Yeah. Quite everybody knows the rules. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, that's uh, – he's he comes off as very arrogant, very, very arrogant. And um, I don't like – you know, I mean, not saying that I wouldn't because I probably would, but um, if I had won, say, that $2 billion Powerball last week, um, you know, I would probably change. But I, I dislike when people become overly successful and become arrogant. You know, I mean, I'm sure people would change a bit to, to guard themselves and everything. But he comes across as completely fucking arrogant and it annoys me to no end. So I don't really pay attention to that. Just yeah. remember, his favorite kind of pizza is New Haven pizza. Well, that's don't come to New Haven, bro. Because, <laughs> you know, he's a bro. You know. He's a he's a he's a piece of bastard, bro. Yeah, he annoys me. I, I just don't, you know. Kevin Ron never... Zombie can sit there and jack each other off. <laughs> Are you saying no to the Ron I, Zombie part of the? Yeah, I, I, I maintain peace with everyone. Everyone. No, I love Ron. I just I dog on Ron when I can. Okay. <laughs> okay, then that's okay. Yeah, let them hang around and whatever you just said. Um. Oh my God. You know, it, it's it's always when I do shows like this that someone wants to challenge me on something political, and I'm not going to say it on the show because I don't want to make it a. Political. Oh well, don't worry. When we go over the NWA, we'll probably get into something political. Oh, I'm <laughs> sure. I know all about that. That. Oh, oh my God. All right. So after the MJF clip, uh, they show a Stokely Hathaway vignette about not needing MJF anymore, which was really fucking good. Like I will never dog on Stokes. Stokes always cuts a great promo, and uh, he probably delivered the line of the night when he said, "You, you, you. We could have done this together, but inside, instead, you decided to ride John Moxley's dick. And there's nothing. There's no crime worse offensible than dick riding without a license." I liked that. That was pretty good. I like Stokely. Um, I was at. Uh, then we get Ethan Page advancing the eliminated tournament over Eddie Kingston. Which... Jesus fuck! What are we doing? <laughs> That knocked out your pick right away. Yeah. Took one match. Um, then we I'm telling get, uh, you, I'm telling you, Eddie, Eddie is right now is wishing he had taken that job as a fucking coach in NXT. I told you this tournament was set up for Ethan Page, and you said, no, he's going to lose in the first round of Kingston, but whatever. We'll and apparently now, yeah, it's Ethan Page, which is really fucking sad. Uh, then we got Rouge Jose in the dark order backstage with Renee. Ru uh, Jose says 10 will get the first title shot when Rouge wins the tourney and then the world title. <laughs> Which sure. we found out Roosh is just as bad as cutting an English promo as Andrade is. They just, they just uh, never like, do they take turns gargling marbles before they get on screen? You don't love that. Oh my God. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, then we get probably uh, one of the dumber segments of the night. Uh, so Wardlow makes easy work of Davari to retain the TNT title. How bad is it that I did not realize it was Arya Davari in the ring? I'm like, who the fuck are these two guys? I didn't notice them because I well, I was too fixated on the douchebag butler dressed up dude in the, and in the fucking. So you've got Arya Davari on, who's trying to push this fucking this fucking stable he's got with fucking um with Sunny Kiss and and uh, not Brock Lesnar, and right, they're not even out there with him. No. And he doesn't even get entrance music. He's just standing in the ring when they come back from break. Yep. So we automatically know you're a fucking jobber. <laughs> so Wardlow beats him within like 90 seconds after like four power bombs or something mm -hmm. like that. Yep. Then Wardlow calls out Hobbs because Hobbs has been coming after him the last couple of weeks on TV. Yep. Hobbs comes out to the top of the ramp and Wardlow just continues talking while Hobbs just stands there. And eventually says someone the lines of, I'm going to win every championship in the company. And Samoa Joe, who was with Wardlow the whole time, now standing behind him in the ring, decides, fuck this shit, and just blasts Wardlow in the back of the head with the ROH TV title and then puts him to sleep. And they missed the belt shot because they had the camera on fucking Powerhouse Hobbs. So they completely missed the belt shot. They come back and Joe's like gingerly kind of like putting his arms around his head to like choke him out. Well, he's trying and to talk like, him through it. That's what Yeah, it exactly. Because Wardlow is like, oh, what am I supposed to do? Because he's green as fucking goose shit. And then it's like, so tell me how this makes sense in any in any form way. Like, he says he's coming for all the belts in the company. Isn't ROH supposed to be a separate company? So why would Joe care? It's a Tony mm -hmm. Khan property. I don't fucking know. 
but they keep saying that they're separate brands. So why would the ROH TV champ care about the the the, the AEW TV Listen, champ? We're going for I, the AEW belts. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna call this right now. If TK doesn't pull off a TV deal, he's gonna unify all the belts. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. He's gonna unify the TV with the TNT. He's gonna unify the two world titles. He'll unify the tag titles. He's gonna unify the All Atlantic with the pure title. He'll prop. Probably, and then he'll probably unify the trios titles as well. Everything's oh, so Dalton going. Castle can get one last payday before he gets kicked to the curb? Yes, I'll get one last payday before getting uh Meltzer drivered into oblivion by the young bucks. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Poor Dalton. Listen, I'm just I'm just calling as I see it. If they, if TK doesn't land that TV deal that he's been promised, which he won't months, I'm, he won't. I know. You're not gonna I give know. it to him. I know. Um, in the meantime, you mentioned the, uh, the the camera shots. Who the fuck is calling these camera angles? Who's the fucking executive director of these shows? Because it's TK, it's a fucking layoff and let somebody else take over. They just did. They they don't have good people in their production booth. I mean, anybody who suffers from seizures would have lost their mind during that segment. It was going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Like, no, dude, like, chill. Which is quite hilarious because they have Jeff Jarrett there now who kind of knows a little bit about producing a television show. You'd think he would be in the trailer. Are you trying to make me laugh for you just saying that for the... I'm just saying, as far as, like, you've got a bunch of fuck buckles who don't know what they're doing, but you've got a guy who has some experience. I'm not saying it's good, but has some experience with producing a television show. What? Should we call Dixie Carter, too, while we're at it? (laughs) I'm just saying, he was already there. He was sitting in the back. (laughs) Did you ever like like Dixie Carter there, Ed? (laughs) No. Um, <laughs> I hear, I hear from friends that she was amazing and nice and kind, but as a booker, they say you know she was just a moron. Um, I heard I, she was really just a rat. I, well, I'm not going to go that far, but you know, I mean, that's like Scott possible. Hall said she was really putting over all the well, boys. He was always drunk. Um, and I say now that when I hung out with respect. him, I say that with the utmost respect. Um, because I drink all the time. Um, the, uh, the thing with her is I, I get the impression and it seems the same way with AEW, uh, Khan, whatever his name is, um, that it was just a toy. It's just a toy. It was a toy for her. Um, I think she wanted the best. Don't get me wrong. And she wanted to be successful, but overall with her, you know, billionaire parents, I think it was just a, you know, like a toy for her, like it is for Tony Khan. And, you know, she was just throwing money at, how can I say it? Like Hogan, you know, she she yeah. let him convince her that, you know, you should bring this person in, this person in, this person in. And when it was a failure, you know, she didn't stop and say, wait, this isn't working. Let's, you know, reverse course. You know, she did after a while, but right. um, after everybody got paid, you know. Um, yeah. But I think it was just like a, a, a little toy for them and uh, until it wasn't. And yeah. um, that, that's my biggest thing with Tony Khan. I mean, like I said, I don't begrudge anybody a payday. Um, I here. want them to, yeah, I want them to get paid. I want them to be successful. I want them to have beautiful houses and cars and ugly children. But um, I, I've been on an anti children kick for those of you that don't know. Um, fuck them kids. Fuck them kids. Um, that stomping into the mud thing is just, I'm still cracking up over it. Um, but the, uh, the, I'm going to be like, what? Um, <laughs> but the idea that he, you know, he he has no stream of conscience, if that makes sense. Like he has no to get from point A to point B, you need to have a stream of conscience. You need to know what you're gonna do. And I just get the impression that he has no fucking idea what he wants to do. Now, this is only based on the one episode uh, that I watched on television. Well, that's how to get the, from point A to point B. It just takes going to point C, B, D, uh, C, right. D. Right, okay. Because, <laughs> you know, if I was a new fan, and I'm actually an insider, not as extent, with as extensive knowledge as some people in the business, but I have some knowledge, and I'm not, you know, like a smart or anything. Um, I, 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 I know the inside. I've been doing it for 12 years. Um, I know some of these things. And, you know, I'm just watching. If I, But if I was a new fan coming in, I would be like, what the fuck is going on? I have no idea mm-hmm. what is going on. And that was my first experience with it and my last. I mean, I'll give it another chance. Everybody's going to say, no, don't. But, um, you know, I like to see, you know, he has a lot of the people that came up through our companies um, 
you know, on the dark matches and stuff. So, you know, they're getting paid and I'm glad for that, but I'm not glad that he's putting out a product there that, you know, has dropped in the ratings tremendously. Let me, let me go political here. Bigly, hugely, bigly. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it, it's, in a, it's, if you're going to draw fans in, you need to have them hang. It's, it's like a sequel, a movie. If you do something at the end of a movie, that's going to want to draw them in to see the sequel. When I watched the episode, there was nothing that made me want to tune in the next week. Yeah. And if that makes any sense to you, you know, and it, 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 I was like, oh man, like a cliffhanger, you know, in yeah. what they say in TV, you know, there was no cliffhanger. And I was like, fuck, I got to get back here. You know, and, uh, you know, so oftentimes WWE, um, they do things to the point where you want to tune in the following week or you want to watch the pay-per-view because you're, you're, you have a vested interest in uh, a wrestler or the title that a wrestler holds. Mm -hmm. um, and you want to see where it's going to go, even though most times more than not, you and I can predict what's going to happen. You're, okay. We still want to see it happen because right. we don't know the story in the ring. You know, see, people need to understand in, in, in this business, there's two stories. There's the storyline, which is the Booker's book, and there's also the story that's being told in the ring, how we start the match, how we get to the end of the, how they, the boys get to the end of the match. Mm -hmm. And um, that that's always exciting to watch. So even if you know the title's not going to switch hands or anything, you want to see what's going to happen uh, right. in the ring and how they're going to do it. AEW just didn't do that for me storyline wise. Like none of their yeah. storylines that day, I had no fucking clue what was going on. None at all. <laughs> well, that that makes three of us. So that's okay. It hasn't um, changed. Every week it's been like that. Yeah. Uh, so we get Jaden the baddies backstage with Renee. Sure, whatever. <sighs> um, basically, just sets up what happens on Rampage. We'll get to that later. Um, and just they officially announced the. The the fucking the other women's title match for fucking uh, the pay per view with her and right, Nyla. Right. Um. The TBS champion versus the TBS champion. Right. It. They put quotation marks around because Nyla stole the belt. I'm like, she's not the champion. She just stole the fucking belt. Oh, Why yeah. are you giving yeah. any credence to it? Let's let's fill edit on this. So, well, they decided to go Bret Hart, Jean Pierre Lafitte, 1994 on us. Uh, where um, our uh. Or now knows PCO stole Bret Hart's jacket, and then they had a pay per view match over the fact that he stole Bret Hart's jacket on an in your house. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Same yeah. kind of shit now where Nyla Rose, Rose stole, stole Jade's the TBS belt. title from Jade, and now we're leading up to a match where the real champion is facing the fake champion for to that get her belt, belt back. at pay per view. Yes, and they're both heels. And by the way, to the point where uh, Nyla faced somebody on Rampage Friday night. One, Jade then came out and attacked Nyla, but security held Jade back from getting the belt from Nyla. In Again? The so technically, security prevented the champion from getting, from getting her rightful championship belt, belt from And the that's the second champion. time they've done that. Yes. Why? That makes no sense. Is that, see, that, see, that doesn't move a story along for me. So I, I would be <laughs> like, you know, this makes no sense. I wouldn't watch the next week. I just wouldn't. Right. <sighs> anyway, so then we get to Britt and Saray in the ring with Tony Schiavone. Uh, Saray announces she's medically cleared because everybody wants to see somebody with a neck injury back in the ring. She is um, going to be paralyzed. Yeah. I give it two months. Um, then they make a match for full gear between Saray and Britt Baker. Um, and from what I recall, I'm just remember if you mentioned this to me, JJ. Mm -hmm. Is it... Did you say there's a rumor where there's a clause or contract that she can't get hit from anything from behind. Yeah, she can't take any maneuvers from the back. <laughs> Aha, what you did there, I see it. Um, so, well, like, yeah, so really good. So you're not medically cleared if you can't take a German suplex. I Sorry. I should ask Xavier Woods if she can still take it from the back. Um, I'm not anyways. even do it from the front. I've seen the video. She was on top of him. He was sitting I, down. Brad I, Maddox was sitting down. Oh, right that's right. Him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. I've seen it. I regret ever bringing that up. Um, then we get... Okay. Are we going to talk about that really weak-ass fucking DDT she gave Britt to end the segment? That looked like she was putting a child to bed? Like, dink! Well, that's because she was letting her tailbone instead of her back because she's trying to protect her neck. Uh-huh. I know. Um, um, now to another segment that made no fucking sense to me. 
but I'll explain Before why. In a, I'll, ex- I'll explain why on the back end. <laughs> so we have the factory, Jay Lethal and Sanjay together because Lethal is paying. Oh no, Sanjay's paying off the factory for two dimes for beat. the shit last week. Yeah. Okay, so now you you brought it up before I could even get to it. We thought that they were putting this kid with that stable. Instead, right. they were like, no, we were just using him because he was there. Right. <laughs> Reasons. Uh, so then they're right. interrupted by Dan Housen and Orange Cassidy and Best Friends. Sets up a match on Rampage between Orange and uh, Lethal, I think it was, no. right? No, no, it was orange, no, it was orange and, uh, and Lee Johnson. Right, Lee Johnson. Thank you. And then they cut right away, but they cut right back to Trent Beretta calling them scumbags so that they could set up Trent versus Lethal to happen right after that. Right. Because reasons. Poor, 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 poor and, they, and this was actually a continuation, continuation of the fact that the main event of Dark was Danhausen against QT Marshall. Because everybody knew that was the main event of Dark before they watched. Of course, it. everyone did. Don't you know? Yes. Everyone. Everyone, wa- everyone, everyone watches everyone. YouTube. Everyone. Everyone. Uh, so Jay Lethal <laughs> beats Trent in a clusterfuck finish because you have Sanjay out there. You have fucking Chuck right inside. It was a fucking mess. But Jay Lethal ends up beating Trent. Then they, uh, Jay and Sanjay and tall ass baseball boy go to the back go to the top of the ramp basketball not baseball remember jeff Jarrett talked about how he had a netflix special basketball baseball zippy the giant pinhead cricket whatever um so at the top of the ramp sanjay calls out jeff Jarrett, and Jarrett uh basically lays out a challenge to darby allen and sting and that match is going to be at full gear because everyone wants to see sting and jeff Jarrett in the same ring again yes absolutely Oh, but let's not mention that Jeff Jarrett had to take had to take a swing at uh, fucking Braun Strowman, and say that Satnam Singh's a real giant. He's not a fake monster in in red skinny jeans that is being promoted by the Banana Nose Circus because he's all salty oh, that Hunter trips didn't nose? keep him in. Yeah, well, that's good. So much for asking permission to yeah. me to go sign the contract. Uh, what have you seen, Satnam Singh? Who? Satnam Singh is this, okay, so he's this Indian dude who got drafted to be in the NBA. Like a, He was like a third-round nothing draft pick. He f- failed out of the NBA, but Tony Khan threw a bunch of money at him because he's seven-foot fucking oh, three. Oh, he's another, uh, what's his name? Kali. Uh, Kali, that can't walk. But if you look him there. up, this dude looks like that there's a fucking Cornette calls him Zippy the Giant Pinhead because he looks like one of the he pinhead does. He, he does. does. Why he doesn't he like trim his pinheads. eyebrows? <laughs> wow. Yeah, and this, this, this dude has not point. worked a single match yet, and he's been there for almost a year. Oh, well, correction. He was in a six-man tag once or twice. Was he? Where? Was he, was he tagged He was in? on a six-man tag on Dynamite. This is back when he first came in. It was, or was it a tag? It was a tag or a six-man. Because I, I don't recall was, him ever being in the ring. <laughs> oh, he was, yeah, he was in the ring. Oh, God. I want to say it was against... Uh, was it the blondes and somebody else? I think. Oh God! I mean, something like that. It was. Oh God! I want to say it was against maybe the blondes and Brock Anderson, something like that. I don't remember. <laughs> um, it was. It was a while ago. That's. Uh, I don't remember on the top of my head. Um, he made his television debut on in April 2022. AEW Dynamite. He attacked Samoa Joe and aligned himself with Jay Lethal and Sunday. Right. And I don't recall Sunday. him ever having a match after that. I just recall mm-hmm. him always oh. being there. Oh, he had a workout at the WWE Performance Center, but that was in 2017. I guess that didn't go over. Well, yeah. Out, oh, we have Omos five here. years ago. Five years ago, he didn't make it. Pa- he didn't make it past the scruff in the PC, and Tony Khan went, "I'm gonna throw money at this motherfucker." <laughs> Same thing you do with not Brock there, fucking Parker Boudreau. It's like, oh, they fired him because he's not learning. Let's throw money at this fucker. This is terrible. All right. So uh, then we get Jungle Boy backstage with Renee saying he's going to challenge, lay a challenge out to Christian and Luchasaurus at Rampage. Yay. They're really trying hard as hell to get some people to watch Rampage, but it didn't happen. Nobody um, watched Rampage ever. Then we get Moxley cutting an in-ring promo on, on, on MJF because they got to do something to hype up the title match. Yeah. Um, then, another, there. then we got another... 
elite Thanos digital editor type shit thing. So what they're doing there, they're doing the doomsday clock because it's slowly ticking to midnight. And they keep showing graphics for full gear. So obviously they're showing up at full gear. Like nobody could figure that out. Well, they're showing, so they're showing graphics that look like gears, but it's the workings of a clock. And what they do is if you, if you look at the way they're designing it, because you can see like anyone that's ever read a comic book can figure this shit out. They're showing all these like sepia tone things of nuclear explosions. And then they're showing the clock and that's the doomsday clock. As each minute gets closer to midnight, it's the closest to nuclear devastation. So what they're saying is when they come back, they're destroying everything. Ooh, I, mean, I give a fuck. It's Kenny everything. Omega and the fucking Bucks. They're not destroying yeah. shit, except I mean, their own hopes of keeping this company alive. I was gonna say, technically, they've been destroying things since day one, but whatever. Um, then we get a Danielson pre tape about his match later in the show. Jamie Hader beats Sky Blue because everybody cares about that show. Uh, then we get Cage and Brian Cage and Dante Martin talking uh, the pre tape talking about their match on Rampage because everybody cares about Brian Cage. <laughs> um, although I don't know, I, I think Ed could pull off the haircut. That might be the only thing. I, I, um, what the faux hawk that Brian Cage has? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What? Did, oh no! Oh my god! Oh no! No, I <laughs> couldn't pull that off. My hair grows here. I could reverse, reverse. Hawk that reverse ah. mohawk that <laughs> you do like hawk like yeah, Legion I, of Doom. Wow. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. Oh my god. He looks angry. He looks so angry. It's because he's always roided up and he admits yeah. it. Oh, he wow. openly admits that he could never fucking try out with WWE again because he would never pass wellness. <laughs> oh, Dumbass. Christ. Uh yeah. then then we get to the thing that uh JG and I discussed before the show that makes no fucking sense. Uh so Originally, three out of these four eliminator tournament quarterfinal matches were booked for Rampage. Um, but for whatever reason, they decided to take one of those matches and turn it into a 15 second backstage beatdown randomly in the middle of Dynamite. Because Archer attacks Starks for, no, for like whatever reason. Then they never had their match on Friday night. Because, sure, that works. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe that was so maybe that was the reason was they were advertising it, but they showed an attack and then sometime on rampage and passing they said Ricky Stark so it wasn't cleared tonight. And they, so they're they say shit. just so that oh well I they probably they forgot because they're fuck ups. They and they're probably kicking the can well, down I, the road. When, to I, run down, it this when week. I run down rampage, you'll understand how overbooked it was. It's okay. Well, yeah. Um then we get to the main event, which is Danielson Guevara, two out of three falls. Now explain this to me. When's the first fall by DQ? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. So Danielson wins the first fall by DQ when Sammy throws a fucking chair at his face. Yep. But then five seconds later, Sammy isn't getting DQ'd when the ref's standing right there as he bashes Danielson in the head with a microphone. Because, and here's why, here's the dumb logic. Because he got DQ'd and then what happens is the next fall does not then start until they're both back in the ring. So because he kept attacking him on the outside, they had not both gotten back into the ring for the second fall to begin. It's dumb logic, but that was the logic. Stupid. Very. <sighs> Sammy wins the second fall. I honestly forget how. I don't care. And it didn't matter. Like If Danielson didn't clean sweep this one, it just made Danielson look bad. Yeah, so Danielson wins the third fall, wins the match, and that's how the show goes off the air. Yay. Wonderful. Thank God it's over. But now um, we're going to get a tag match this week of Claudio and Danielson against Jericho and Guevara because AEW never does incessant rematches. Or a tag match to preview a four-way match, which I'll mention again in a minute. Uh, so let me get to Rampage, which I'm assuming you didn't watch there, JJ. No, I just read the results because fuck Rampage. Good. I was one that DVR'd it, so I couldn't count for the 250,000 that watch it live. Um, <laughs> so Cage and Luchasaurus end up calling out Jungle Boy so Jungle Boy can lay out his challenge. And Jungle Boy challenges Luchasaurus to a steel cage match at full gear, and Cage accepts on Luchasaurus's behalf. And then Luchasaurus lays out Jungle Boy to end the segment because, yay, duh, he's big. Um, and Jungle Boy looks like he's still 10. Uh, then we get Death Triangle backstage with Lexi Nair. Pac says they got to take advantage of every opportunity presented and defend their trios belts by any means necessary while still holding the hammer. He still has the hammer. They clicked it on the title belt. The hammer. Now go uh, the hammer way. Fuck. It's a fucking time bell hammer. It's this fucking big. That's not a weapon. 
looks like the fucking hammer that uh, uh, Tim Robbins used to escape Shawshank Redemption. Anyways. Um, exactly! Then we get Brian Cage advancing... Wait, 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 wait. What? Yes. Is there... Is there... Uh, a gimmick with a guy walking around with a hammer. Uh, Pack Adrian Neville has been uh, has been winning his matches by knocking a guy out with the timekeeper uh, time bell hammer, which is like a rock hammer. It's that big. Right, yeah. right. No, I get that. I just I can't help but think that there's another wrestler that used to walk around with a hammer all the time. Maybe a little bit bigger, but still. <laughs> yes, yes. Right. But you know, right. Cody's not there anymore, so they figured they'll just uh. give it to Pack. Because he's the next, he's the next in the line of disgruntled ex WWE guys that was there since the beginning. He uh, used it once. Well, how is that a gimmick for for him? What? Who? Cody or Pac? Yeah, Cody. I don't know. No, Cody used it more than once. <clears throat> I, I think I, I one don't... very specific moment. Then smashing I, I the don't... throne, but then there was right. like there was two. Th- there was the fucking. Th- I remember there was the the false count anywhere match with Andrade where he pulled out where he pulled out a sledgehammer. Oh Jesus Christ! And then there was like a there was a couple of times he pulled out uh, the, the the ladder match with Sammy Guevara. He pulled out a sledgehammer. Like he, he said, he did out. it. Yeah, Cody's a douche. <laughs> we know this. <laughs> Listen, two but anyways, three, at least two other three guys in this room don't understand what pulling out means. So it's okay. <laughs> um, Anyways, uh, so Cage beats Dante oh. Martin in the Eliminator Tournament because reasons. Um, Lee Moriarty backstage with Lexi says he's ready for any title. And then guess who showed up? Adi Maestro Pockets. and Brooklyn Bridge. Oh, Pockets. <laughs> no, worse. Wardlow? Worse. Mick Jagger. The title that's not really a title. Oh, Hook? Oh. Yes. Oh, Jesus, fuck. Fucking Taz's in. kid. Hook walks in, does a brief stare down at Lee, and then walks away. Doesn't say anything because that's oh, that's stare hard. down. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I got to tune in next week. That I have to see the results of this stare down. Yeah, especially when it's a stare down with one guy who never speaks. So that's all he does <laughs> is stare down. Exactly. Uh, then I get another vignette for the House of Black. The that House was, of Black. That was voiceovered by Buddy Matthews, so it sounded very interesting. The House of Black. Um, then we get Bandito versus Roosh in, I guess, the third quarterfinal of the Eliminator Tournament. Uh, Jose, Bandito wins. Jose tries removing Bandito's mask during the match. John Silver comes out to uh, take out Jose, so he doesn't do that. And then Roosh is distracted by Silver at ringside. Bandito wins with a roll-up. <laughs> Has Roosh won a fucking match on AEW since he got signed? Yes. Okay, so once. He's at least won a singles match and a tag match that I can remember off the top. Okay. All right. (coughs) Just Um, seems besides that, he's always doing the job. Then we get a pre tape with Claudio and Jake Hager, where Hager tells him he should think about sports entertaining again. I. I, You know how that probably sounds. Thought a lot with death with a lift, but Jake Hager. Um, Boy. Then we get the Nyla Rose segment that I mentioned earlier where she beat Kayla Sparks in one minute and Nyla was doing all Jade's moves the whole match and then the whole Jade thing, you know. Yay. Uh, da, da, da. And then main event, Orange retained the Atlantic title over Lee Johnson. That was her show. Shocker. Yeah. By the way, uh, Orange Cassidy is carrying around the championship in a backpack, Ed, just so you know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm still focused on the hammer. <laughs> we'll, we'll try to find you uh, we'll try to find you one after your show next Friday night well this is the thing this is the thing I, I totally want to tune into AEW because of the hammer <laughs> not so four sized hammer sure go ahead <laughs> so with that that is all the televised AEW for the week so that means we have our uh, we have to we have to go to our reoccurring segment really quick before we close that out we I sent you a man. I sent you a graphic. Yes, there we go. So it is officially three weeks in since Willow Nightingale has been signed to a full-time AEW contract. And for last week, the week, for uh, the the week ending November twelfth, two thousand twenty-two. This is officially three weeks in a row that Willow Nightingale has not been seen on regular television nor YouTube. But. There is hope. 
Yeah, she, supposedly she did a dark elevation match that'll air this week. It'll be supposed to air tonight. We'll see. It's supposed to air tonight as we're recording this on Monday, November 14th. She's so four weeks match. in after getting announced that she got a contract. She's booked she in a gets tag a match. Fucking yes. YouTube match. She's booked with Riho to take on uh, May Segura and Emmy Sakura. This poor girl. This poor girl. Yeah, I know. Uh, Ed, what are your feelings on Willow Nightingale, by the way? Uh, well, let me look her up since I have no idea who it is. Widow, She's a local New York. Willow Widow Nightingale. Widow Norton. Oh, Nightingale. Okay. Nightingale. She's a local New York girl. She's fucking great. She's got oh, charisma. Okay. She can fucking work. She's a fucking sweetheart. Okay. And like basic, basically, like she was go- she was getting per diem shots at AEW for the past year, and she got over on her own. Oh, I know her. I recognize yeah. her. Yeah, she's a fucking sweetheart. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I like her. Yeah, I yeah. I, I think I've seen her in a few things from my um very uh lady wrestling uh obsessed friend uh Krusty Ruffles. Um, okay. he uh he's a huge fan. Um, did she ever work for um? What's the one out in Midwest, the Midwest there that's all female? Um, uh, oh, Shimmer? Yeah. Shimmer, yeah. Okay, yeah. maybe that's... Because well, I yeah. went to a few sh- Shimmer shows a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, I recognize her, yeah. But yeah, but basically wow. she, she got over on her own and then Quick what break. happened What happened was uh, uh, Hunter hired Gabe Sapolsky back uh, to start looking at indie talents again and Gabe had her on his radar and all of a sudden Tony Khan signed her to a full-time contract after giving her per diem shots for a fucking year. So oh, the, I see. Yeah, they totally. made the big announcement. Willow Nightingale is all elite, and since then she hasn't been on fucking TV. Oh no! So they're just keeping her like they do. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. So that's uh, why I started doing Willow Watch on the show to see uh, if she actually gets sense. anything. And so oh. far, three weeks into her fucking full time contract, she has not been anywhere. Uh, remember how you announced that uh, a few weeks ago how Athena's new gimmick is beating the shit out of jobbers on, on Dark and Dark Elevation? Yeah. Yeah. She's upgraded from jobbers to Diamante this week, by the way. Still a jobber. <laughs> Better than, bigger name than 90% of the jobbers she was working with. Um, <laughs> what else we got here? Oh, so uh, just to give a little, I know it's blurry. I know it looks weird on YouTube, but fucking deal with it. So here's the eliminated tournament update. Yes, with my wonderful hand, my finger writing with the, the blue there. So <laughs> Ethan Page won his. He's going to be facing Bandito in the semifinals of the World Title Eliminator Tournament, which is going to be Wednesday on Dynamite. On the other side of the bracket, Brian Cage won his quarterfinal. But like I mentioned before, the whole issue with Archer and Ricky Starks, I don't have a fucking clue what happened there. Um. I'd assume they address it. I've been checking AEW's Twitter all fucking weekend. Nothing, like literally yeah. nothing, except the 15 second clip of Archer attacking mm-hmm. Starks at Dynamite. So, so whatever. No fucking and clue. So I love how they're doing this whole tournament to have the two people face each other at the pay per view to see who's going to face whoever the champ is on free TV a month after the pay per view. Yeah, it's going to be Wednesday the. 14th of December, I think. That, yeah, the 14th. Wednesday, December 14th. Like, it's not like the next week. It's literally, we're going to have a pay-per-view throwaway match to fucking decide who's going to be the new contender. In three and, and a half weeks. In three and a half weeks. Yeah. Like. Uh, meanwhile, apparently, uh, oh. it's been confirmed that Tony Khan likes selling pizza parties after the shows. Yeah, cocaine pizza. Um. So, uh, yeah. That's what we're doing with the uh, Cocaine pizza, I guess you want to call it. Sure, go ahead. Uh, in the meantime, I this this caught me so fucking weird and funny. I don't even know how to explain it. Um, nope, wrong name. Uh, so somebody asked a question on Reddit. Okay. Go ahead and read as I pop it up. The topic is: Why does FTR hold a string on the turnbuckle? Are you fucking shitting me? And here's the question. A question from whoever posted this uh, post, uh, user Bacon Vino, all one word. Maybe it's Brad Hollister who posted this. I don't know. Um, no, no, no pop, JJ. Thanks. Fuck you. Fuck uh, Brad when, Hollister. When the tag partner is out of the ring, they are holding onto a piece of white string tied to the top turnbuckle. I notice they are the only tag team who does this. Why does FTR have this string? Everyone has it. FTR are the only guys that know what the fuck it is. 
Would you like to explain the concept of the tag rope there, Mr. Alexander? Oh, Jesus. For all of you fucking Gen Zers and fucking millennials who never watched wrestling prior to Ruthless Aggression, because y'all claimed you watched Attitude Era, but you didn't because you weren't alive yet. The piece of string that's sticking out of the turnbuckle is the tag rope. Old school tag team wrestling says that the tag team partner has to be within a certain amount of space, a certain amount of inches away from the corner in order to still be legal. The tag rope is the length that they are allowed to be away from the corner. So that way you don't get a guy standing mid ring trying to tag in like you see on some of these super indie shows. The piece of string is about uh, nine inches if that. Usually less, but I'd say nine inches is usually the given of length. Ed, how do you feel about nine inches? Um, I'm sorry. I'm busy right now. Uh, when you had me uh, check on um, <clears throat> the Widow Norton, I um, I happened to notice she posted about AR Fox. And, of course, that I'm having flashbacks to a couple of years ago. <laughs> By the way, he, he is booked for AEW TV this week. Oh, is yeah. he really? Oh, yeah, I, he's working I, I actually dark. like him. He's, uh, really like he's him. booked. No, he's booked a job out on Dynamite to the trios champions. It's gonna oh. be Dar- it's gonna be Dante Martin, Darius Martin, and AR Fox against Death Triangle for the trios titles. That's right. That's Pac, Ray Phoenix, and Penta El Zero. Pentagon Junior. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> um. All right. Real quick. Full gear card as of right now. <sighs> Uh, we already mentioned Luchasaurus versus Jungle Boy in a steel cage. Jarrett and Lethal against Sting and Darby Allen in a tag match because everybody wants to pay for that. Yep. Uh, Britt Baker versus Soraya in the Who Breaks Whose Neck first match. Jade Cargill versus Nyla Rose for I'm the real TBS champion. No, I'm the real TBS champion. I am the tag team champion. <sighs> I thank you. Uh, Chris Jericho defending the ROH world title in a four way against Danielson, Claudio, and Sammy Guevara. Tony Storm defending the interim woman's title against Jamie Hayter. Uh, the finals of the Eliminator Tournament. Acclaim versus Swerve in Our Glory for the tag titles. And Moxley MJF for the world title. That's only nine matches, which means expect about seven more to be booked before Sunday. <laughs> it's honest. Actually, no, I think it's Saturday now that I think about it. Hang on. Yes, it's Saturday. All right. So, yeah, so Saturday. Yeah, fuck all. All right. Now we get to the rundown of the let's make wrestling political pay-per-view that happened over the weekend. Yeah, here we go. None of us watched this, so we're just going to give our takes. <laughs> NWA Hard Times 3 pay-per-view featured 10 title matches because we invited titles from every organization, apparently, because fuck all. Well, no, because um, there was technically only one that wasn't an NWA title, and that was the MLW belt. The NWA has somehow more titles than the than AEW show. I don't know how that. Oh happened. my god! Oh my god! I this wish this was I the show. This was the show where you were like, "I'm looking most forward to the title match." Right? Did I send yeah. that graphic? Because yes. everything was a fucking title match. Yes. Oh my god! I remember right. that. Okay. Yeah. Oh my so, god. Um, Same show. JJ, JJ, check messenger. Yeah. So hard times three. This is also the show where. Uh, instead of being a professional and allowing all this to wrestle his final match on pay-per-view, <laughs> Billy Corgan said, fuck you, and basically suspended him after he gave his notice. Because Billy Corgan knows how to do business. Oh my god, I'm saying, uh, Brian, you're gonna I'm gonna you're gonna wanna upload this. <laughs> while you're doing that, while you're doing that, um this this goes the title thing we just talked about or mentioned, um, this goes back to what we I said when I first joined. The, the conversation about having an interest, a vested interest in a belt. If you have every match, uh, <laughs> a title match, and they're all like this, have, oh, the world heavyweight champion, the national heavyweight champion, it's, it's, it becomes bullshit, all right? It becomes convoluted bullshit. Yep. And that's why, that's, that's why NWA has never recovered after the, you know, first season, the, or, or the pan- they'll blame it on the pandemic or shit, but no, it's right. bullshit like this. That, right. You know, people it, don't care that the East Florida heavyweight championship belt is on the fucking line. All right. right. That, that's the thing is Billy Corgan is just like, oh, the NWA used to have all these titles. Yeah, they yeah. had all these titles because there were territories and the exactly. world champion couldn't be in every territory. So that's why you had the U.S. tag belts and the fucking shit like that. 
you don't just dig them out because they're fucking there and give them to assholes like Wrecking Ball Ligursky because you can. Right. And, and make the, and make, try to make people think that, you know, the East Oklahoma, you know, heavyweight, light, light heavyweight champion, you what's, know. Is, what's the one they always bring up on um, fucking Cornette's show? What is it? The, the, the West oh Virginia God. Heritage Tag Titles or yeah, something? Yeah, it was something yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, man. Where it's it, like it, Goulas would just randomly pull him out of the desk. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't there also like a random brass knuckles championship or some shit like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. stupid. Like I was all for like when they re- when they what? when they when they brought back the junior heavyweight title and they've got Homicide defending that, but yeah. like not when you've got all these other fucking belts. That's the thing. And like you said, <laughs> you know, I'd be fine with a brass knuckle championship if it was you know. The, the 70s, and there were territories all around the country, or world for that matter, but now nobody, shut the fuck up. Right. You know, it's it's so stupid. And if you're on the YouTube side, you can see this picture of the house that they drew in Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking lovely. That's uh, fucking- all right, so let me just run down what happened on the show real quick. Uh, they had so many fucking matches, they had three pre-show matches. Fuck me. <laughs> um, or excuse me, four. They had four pre-show matches. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. All right, so the opening match uh, was determining the number one contender for the world TV title, Mims beating adorable Anthony Andrews. Say that five times fast. Uh, the Wildcat Sports Tag Team Championship. What the fuck, fuck? is this? <laughs> what Blue the fuck is Dow and Jay Spade retained over Sal Renoro and Gags the Gimp. Sal Renoro is still working? I mean, I know Gags the Gimp is one of the guys Mitchell manages, but I didn't know Sal Renoro was still working. I got nothing. Uh, Then in hardcore team war, Mayweather, JTG, and Pulp defeated Jack Stain, Mercurio, and Alex Taylor. That was advertised prior to the show. So, And yeah. then the final pre-show match was, they put the TV title in the pre-show. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. They don't have a TV show. <sighs> And the they world have a TV team, title. Uh, Jordan Clearwater defeated AJ Kazana to win the title because that's that's because reasons. <sighs> so they added more title matches to the show that already had eight. Yes, of them. yes. So that's ten title matches. Yes. <laughs> uh, and by the way, before officially going on the air with the pay per view, NWA announced their first ever live episode of Power for January the thirty first, twenty twenty three. Live on YouTube, yay. I guess smashing point one rating. <laughs> Anyways, the pay-per-view itself, we open with the Voodoo Queen Casket match, Maxine Paler defeating Natalia Markova. No, it was not Sarah Logan acting out Maxine Paler at the show. It was Maxine Paler herself. Themself. Um, Pronouns, pal. Max is, not, Max is nine barry, non binary. Oh, okay. In that case, okay, I understand. If you were trying to get Bruce Pritchard on me, I was going to say fuck off. No, no, Max is non-binary, so... I I understand. My apologies. Uh, Then ML... Because we had to have an MLW title on the show. Uh, National Openweight Championship, Davey Richards retained over Colby Carino. Great, wonderful, outstanding. Uh, Mask versus Mask. Question mark two versus Versus question question mark mark one. one. (laughs) Question mark... This was it. This was it. This was my biggest, this was a bigger problem for me than the fucking, than all the belt matches when I saw this. Because I'm like, who is the fucking, is the special musical guest going to be question mark and the Mysterians? I mean, what the fuck? 96 tears. Exactly. I'm like, what the fuck, man? Oh my God. I just want to see a bee and a cat wrestle. I don't understand. Question mark two one, which was the good the, the, the baby face question mark. And so uh question mark one removed his mask and it was Rodney Mack apparently. <laughs> um, Rodney Mar- Rodney Mack was the question mark. Apparently. How did no one know that? Uh then Kerry Morton beat Homicide to become the new junior heavyweight champion. Oh wow. Well, good, uh, good on good on Nelson doing business. Thrill Billy Silas Mason. I don't remember who this is. Uh, he replaced Nick Aldis and beat Odinson in one-on-one action. Like anyone cares. Uh, Jay Bradley and Wreckin' Bola Gursky retained the U.S. tag titles over Rush Freeman and Brady Pierce. I know. You're so excited about that. Uh, the national heavyweight title, Scion, retained over Dak Draper. Yay. Women's tag titles, Kenzie Page and Ella Envy retained over Missa Kate and Maddie Rinkowski. 
Uh, EC3 defeated Tom Latimer by disqualification. Because, <laughs> sure. Because he couldn't control his own narrative. Uh, world Tag Titles, Bestia 666 and Mecha Wolf. Mecha Wolf? Mecha, Mecha Wolf. Wolf. Mecha Wolf, I thought so. Uh, they retained over Luke and PJ Hawks. Uh, women's World Title, Camille retained over Kylan King and Chelsea Green in triple threat action. Uh, oh, yeah. And apparently the NWA honored Bobby Fulton of the Fantastics after that match. Okay. Um. Yeah, reasons. Sure. Yeah. And then this the does. main event. The main event of the evening. <sighs> question yeah. mark three versus question mark four. <laughs> No, we triple just had threat. four question marks when we fucking saw the result. <laughs> the triple threat match for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. Trevor Murdoch defending against Matt Cardona and Tyrus. Now, did Tyrus drop the TV title somewhere along the line yes, or what? He dropped okay. it. Oh, oh, wait. Let me go back to explain that. So, that was okay. The... Yeah, because uh, yeah, he was the TV champion, but they so, put the TV title in the pre-show, but I thought he was the TV champion. Right. So... You know how Impact has option C? That's how they did this? Uh, the first sentence of the TV title match summary says, Tyrus vacated the strap to cash in the Lucky 7 rule for a world title shot. The Lucky 7 rule? No fucking clue what that means. But I can only assume it's like an option C in... in I have uh, a belt, in- so I'm trading it in for another belt. I, I, I have a championship, but I'd rather have the Brass Knuckles Championship. <laughs> um, okay. Give me that West Virginia Heritage Belt, motherfucker! So, let me run down the summary of this match real quick. Murder. Oh, uh, uh, hold on, hold on one second. I'm sorry. Um, as NWA continues to evolve, this is for so it's evidently they put it in two years ago. Oh. The Dave Lagana announced oh. the Lucky Seven rule. Oh, this Jesus. means that this means that if the oh. TV champion successfully defends his championship seven times in a row, he will then earn a chance to challenge for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. Oh, oh so you have to uh, earn it. Like you don't just rule. decide when you want to do it. That's uh... yeah, yeah. And but the, when you and, when a rule was designed by a dude who got me too'd by more people than fucking God, right, right. Maybe That's... you shouldn't mention it. Yeah. In the NWA, the champion can retain his title by simply outlasting the time limit of six minutes and five seconds. Okay. <laughs> Oh, okay. The TV title matches are only six minutes and five seconds time. That's that's what it says. It, it told, in NWA, the champion can retain his title by simply outlasting the time limit of six minutes and five seconds. That's six fucking five. Yeah. Oh my god! That's oh, that is so fucking terrible. <laughs> you didn't recognize that once he said it. No, I didn't think to put the two and two together and decide they were pissing me off. Jesus. That's fucking uh, terrible. Six oh five, baby. This is crazy. So the summary the of the match. Uh, I don't think Cardona had. Oh, Cardona had Chelsea Green at ringside because she kind of counts. Because uh, she's his wife. <laughs> Black Jesus at ringside for Tyrus. I don't think Murdoch had anyone ringside. Anyways, uh, Murdoch hit a flying bulldog finisher early on Tyrus. Cardona was outside. Um, and made sure to put Tyrus' foot on the ropes to avoid the three count. Uh, later on, Tyrus got Cardona with a flying crossbody for a slam and running splash. Cardona kicked out. Chelsea Green ran out to support. Oh, Chelsea Green wasn't even ringside. She ran out during the match. <laughs> um, she created a distraction for Cardona to hit a low blow and a leg lariat, but Tyrus still kicked out. Then Murdoch hit a DDT on the floor on Cardona, rolled Cardona into the ring. Then Tyrus is up and back at it. Hits, gets the tongue. He's using the tongue in death grip. <laughs> Someone tell Haku in there to kill that motherfucker. Tyrus uses the tongue in death grip and then choke slams Murdoch and pins the champion to become the new world champion. So the the Fox News Funkasaurus is now your new NWA World's Heavyweight Champion. That is just. And then like he did a whole big celebration in the ring because apparently he's a fucking baby face. Well, no. Him, his whole crew now has ch- now has titles. 
Him, yeah, and Zion, like, and Clearwater are all champions. And they had the Beetlejuice, the crackhead, in there with them. Whatever his, whatever his manager is. I can't remember his name. No, like, there was legit Beetlejuice, the crackhead, from fucking Howard Stern was in there with him. You didn't I see mean, the pictures? I saw pictures. I didn't notice that it was... That was yes! I saw the group photo, but I didn't even recognize that was actually... Oh, How geez. do you not recognize that that was Beetlejuice the Crackhead? I was too focused on trying to figure out who the fuck the other champions were. Um, <laughs> that shows you how recognizable NWA talent is right now. Oh, fucking A. But, so what yeah. you're telling me is that Republicans lost this red wave. So they got the NWA title. So they got the NWA. Yes. Okay. Didn't even trade. It's uh, absolutely, (laughs) absolutely. I, I just, I'm, I'm glad I don't watch that. I mean, honestly, if you look at uh, the, um, the idea that uh, how, how bad. They haven't been a NWA because the the first season, you know, I, I I watched on and off, and it wasn't too bad. I couldn't um, get into it. Uh, well, I, it's not. I'm not saying that I was into it. Like I can't wait to see it. But um, it was bearable. Yeah, I, I would rather watch that than a uh, AEW. Um, right. But you know, the the fact that they haven't been able to recover from the pandemic and you know, Lagana being a sex pest. Um, it, it's it's just it's it's like fucking you know it's like Billy Corgan and his fucking music. Right? <laughs> when you let Billy have too much say, the music ends up being shit. Because James E has the only talented Smashing Pumpkin. For those of you that don't know, um, but it, it's so bizarre that if you let him, if you let Billy Corgan do things, it's going to end up shit. And um, and I say that. Uh, knowing that I'm going to uh, piss off those 10 Smashing Pumpkins out there in the world. And, uh, it, well, it's... it's just like how like it's still <laughs> reflecting now about how Billy Corgan, like he owns this company and he still doesn't realize what's kayfabe and what isn't. And he threw that fucking tantrum when Nick Aldis oh my God. Yeah, his yeah, notice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's this for optics, okay? Arguably your most recognizable wrestler that you've had on the brand since revitalized it Decides to give walking papers, but is willing to be professional and work his remaining dates. Right. You say to him, fuck you, you're not wrestling the show. (laughs) In the meantime, you shit on his event his wife was pioneering Uh the power show that they had. Mm -hmm. And not only shit on that actual event that happened, but shit on the idea of ever having another Empower event. Until he has the, the, the best women's athletes in the world, which... Not that fucking hard to do, but whatever. <laughs> and then on top of that, you you triple down on stupidity by now making the booking decision you made with your world title. And then all this just came out and said that the NWA is the most toxic locker room he's ever been in. Oof. Which, Oof. Uh, which I really hope he's not signing to AEW because he's going to learn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, he man. He probably never met Tessa Blanchard then, so. <laughs> uh, oh my yeah. god the stories oh my fucking god yeah. which is funny uh. because i ring announced two of the very first indie shows she ever worked before <laughs> everything got to her fucking head uh-huh because she worked uh. she worked a short uh random shows for a company up like way northern part of new york state yeah uh like outside of lake george yeah and i happened to still be the ring announcer at that time and that that was back when she literally had just first broken in she was still Humble ish, and but then, yeah, that's yeah, night and day, night and fucking day, man. Um, any hooser when uh, you're a racist, everything eventually comes out. Fair, very fair, very, very fair. Is your nose okay? I, I have it's not a it, it's like a wart, but I bought this wart stuff remover. I don't know what it is, it, it just I, I use a razor and cut it off every once in a while. But it comes back, so I'm gonna assume. So you're I've using been the noticing compound W stuff. Yeah. yeah, as I get older, all these little blemishes are coming out, and I just gotta yeah. just start wearing a mask. <laughs> so, are you gonna have a mask versus mask match with Ichiban at some point or something? No, a question mark versus question mark match. You dumbass. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, man. oh, oh god. god. I, I right. just. 
I, wait, there was something about uh, you, you guys just mentioned something and I can't remember now. I was going to say something profoundly stupid because it's about a profoundly stupid topic, NWA. Um, oh, you know, not for nothing, but this guy, he can't unload it. According to my sources, um, he's been trying to unload it to everybody, even the library, and like nobody wants it. Like literally nobody wants it. I believe it. Product. Like, we, well, we I, were, I don't blame him. <laughs> we were just talking last week about how he says like, oh, I was in line to buy ROH too, but I don't know how far in the pecking order I was. It was like, there was no pecking order. It was whoever was a sucker enough to give yes. $40 million <laughs> to the Kinger media. Oh my God. Fucking, yeah. I heard that straight from Bob Evans. That's what that was the going price. Like, so don't fucking tell me that that's not how much it went for. The going right. price was name your price. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> um, by the way, speaking of infinitely stupid before we get into WWE, uh, I do have to give a quick update on something that we have been addressing on and off over the uh -oh. last month or two. Uh oh. Um, our, our, our very good friend, and I use that term very loosely, uh, Mr. Fish. Oh, that fucking idiot. Uh, so Bobby Fish made his pro boxing debut in Dubai last night. It was MMA. It wasn't boxing. It was it was fucking boxing. Don't. It was don't. MMA, it was it was it, it was, was rigged MMA is what it was. It, it was well. It was booked as a boxing match. Yeah. Um. So he won it by second round TKO. Well, for mm -hmm. those of you who haven't watched the video, allow me to explain how this happens. So, um, Bobby and his opponent. Don't ask me to pronounce his name. I don't fucking know and I don't fucking care. Yeah. Um. They were kind of sort of in a clinch, but still throwing hands at each other. Yeah. And it's clear his opponent had a shoulder injury in the match. Uh-huh. So Bobby just simply punches the shoulder, not even at full force. Yeah. And opponent crumbles to ground and just sits on and just, he decides yeah. to just uh, sit on his knee and take the 10 count. Yeah. Finger poke of doom. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, well, like, so so we'll fill, fill it in. So apparently Floyd Mayweather put on some bullshit fucking event in Dubai and Bobby Fish was on the undercard. And uh, they pulled this shit. And th I, I've been having this conversation a few days in a row now because people are like, oh, well, people said Bobby Fish is all washed up. I was like, you do realize that most low, most lower in MMA and, a, and some higher in MMA is just as much of a fucking work as wrestling is, don't you? Like... If fucking and here's some I don't think Brian's privy to, but Wood will remember back when we did the old podcast. Uh, PJ's roommate Josh. The, ah, the yes. Oh, oh, yes. You know he came out after he moved yes. out. Of BJ? Yes, yeah. very yeah. jealous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Josh was the ring announcer for Naga North American Grappling Association. Oh, I know what that is. He, yeah, yeah, exactly. And he openly admitted to us on shit that the shit was a fucking work. Like because they tried to bring in fucking what's his name, the Green Power Ranger, for a couple of fucking shows. Yeah, Jason and he Michael was Frank or something like that. Yeah, something. and Jason, Jason David Frank or something. Whatever. Yeah, and he automatically said like, "I don't do the job. I have to go over in this many rounds." Blah blah blah. Just completely exposed that everything's a fucking work. So, like, don't fucking tell me that MMA is fucking real. Fuck off. It's a work. So, Bobby Fish winning is still a work. <laughs> yeah. Because fuck Bobby and, Fish. And apparently he wants to do kickboxing at some point. Cause... Let him. Go right ahead. Go. Go. I don't give a fuck. Stay, out, stay off of my fucking, stay off of my country. Go. <laughs> what? <laughs> Stay in Dubai, go to Thailand, go find some lady boys, fuck off. Get caught. Uh, I fucking was... hate Bobby Fish. No, you don't wouldn't, say. Wouldn't, wouldn't have guessed. Goodness gracious. All right, let's jump up into SmackDown real quick. At least we can um, get to some tolerable shit now. Yeah. Had you guys, uh, since we're going into the SmackDown WWE, had you guys reported on Kevin Owens' sprain? We oh. were going to. We just oh, found okay. out about it today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so we opened the show with a three segment match where the Usos retain the tag titles over New Day and therefore going to have the official record for longest tag title reign in WWE history. A little bit of uh, The record was today. Mm -hmm. uh, then after commercial break, we come back to the bloodline backstage. Roman congratulating the Usos, saying he has business to handle tonight. Mm -hmm. Um, so, did you notice what's going on with this this World Cup on Fo on Fox thing they're doing? The tournament to go against Gunter. Yeah, they basically took the fucking trophy from the Greatest Royal Rumble, smacked this a SmackDown on Fox logo on the base of it, and called it the World Cup. Well, no, the Greatest Royal Rumble was, if you remember, no, it wasn't the Greatest Royal Rumble because Greatest Royal Rumble was a belt. 
right, because so what, Braun what, won that. What was the fuck? So what was that fucking trophy? Because it was pre-used. I remember that. It was probably either best in the world or world's greatest tag team. It was one of those that had the or the what was it called the 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 Kuwait Cup, not the Kuwait Cup. The it was something else. It was named after one of the Saudi cities. Oh, you mean the NWA Championship, known as the? <laughs> no, it was. I know what you're saying. It was a trophy that they used for one of the Saudi shows. And if it wasn't best in the world, and it wasn't world's uh, the world's best tag team, then it was the it was the one that it was the one that Taker won when AJ thought he had won it, and then Taker came out and beat him in three seconds when he wasn't announced. I forget what it was called, but yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. Hang on, let me try to. To it wasn't the Riyadh Cup, and it wasn't the fucking. Oh, what the fuck was it? Now you're gonna make me fucking work for this shit. <laughs> oh, they did a World Cup event at the Crown Jewel in 2018. Is what you're. Yeah, thinking. yeah. So it was that trophy? It, they also did it again the following year. But it was a tag team turmoil instead of a, a singles. And that was the tag team one, yeah. So the first oh, one. Oh, that's, yeah, that's when, oh, that was the Shane McMahon trophy. That's right. The best in the world, yeah. Yeah, oh, fuck off. I told you. Okay. It was one of those, yes. Okay, so there. Regardless, it's, Whatever. it's fucking ridiculous. They took Whatever. It it's, 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 it's a tournament for a number one contender spot against the Intercontinental title. They don't need a trophy for it. Um. So the first match they have is Santos against Shinsuke. I found it interesting that they let Michael Cole make a reference to Shin versus Muda on New Year's Day during the commentary. That was let him, okay. let him. They're 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 doing it out. They're doing a favor. It's garnering Nash international press. Fucking let him. Uh, <laughs> so Santos advances over Shinsuke, which that surprised uh, me. They're they're really pushing uh, Cuerno there. Yeah. Uh, then we get LA Knight backstage in a promo segment. Saying glad I'm I'm glad I left NWA when I did shit. Yeah. Bray Wyatt's <laughs> logo keeps flashing on and off on the screen behind him, which eventually distracts him because Megan Moran keeps fucking looking at it instead of him. And then Bray appears and they talk back and forth basically. So Bray's first feud is gonna be LA Knight. Yep. Okay. Um talk about a fuck up. Uh six pack challenge the crown number one contender for the SmackDown women's title. Did you see this spot at the end of the match? No, I missed it. I, I, I didn't All get right. to catch so, this live, so but I to, heard about well, it. Allow me to explain. So, so at one point, um, Raquel Rodriguez takes the top portion of one of the sets of steel steps, places it next to the announce table. The Wade Barrett yeah, yeah. side of the announce table. Yeah. Then she pulls a table out from under the ring and sets it up centered with the front of the announce table, but angled towards the stairs. Mm -hmm. She grabs a uh, fucking Sony Deville and has her set up like she's going to suplex her uh, off the, 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 the portion of the staircase she took off through the table. Meanwhile, Liv Morgan was apparently on the other side, the, on the crowd side of the barricade, mm -hmm. which I missed. I, I don't know how I fucking missed that during the match. So she's a, she hops onto the barricade and tries doing a spear so she would put, I don't know if she was just trying to get Raquel through the table or both of them through the table. It was, like it was a convoluted spot that didn't go well. Right. So basically, <laughs> the way the leveling worked is that essentially Raquel was not high enough so that they would go crashing through the table. Instead, when Lear, Liv speared Raquel, mm -hmm. Raquel dropped Sonya to the side of her on the floor. Mm-hmm. And basically, Raquel goes back first into the edge of the table, and Liv took a face full of edge of table. Ugh. That's basically nasty. Um, either way, Shotzi eventually wins. Uh, it's different. She gets a shot at the SmackDown Women's Title at Survivor Series. It's different. Well, I'll give them that. Yes. Then after the break, we get Shotzi backstage with Emma. Emma asking where Madcap is. And people are like, oh, they're starting a love angle. Motherfucker, they're real life boyfriend, girlfriend. They're just, it was just, just a right. random thing to fucking pass through the segment. Right. So Emma leaves. Shayna walks into the picture, warns Shotzi about what's coming for her Survivor Series. Rhonda arrives in the picture as well, distracts Shotzi, and then Shayna chokes out Shotzi. I feel like we're going to get a long, drawn out thing of 
Shayna being the harbinger for Ronda until Shayna eventually turns and we're going to get Shayna and Ronda at Mania. Right, which is interesting because now it's going to be Shotzi versus Shayna on SmackDown on Friday. Yeah. Um, then we get Ricochet backstage with Kayla talking about the World Cup tournament. Gets in Pretty Ricky. Gunter. Uh, welcome back, Jinder Mahal, to SmackDown, but now you're fucked because you're about to get beat by Braun in three minutes. <laughs> um, and that's good. Where- and that's what Braun does to advance in the SmackDown World Cup. Then they... So we obviously know we're going to get Braun versus Walter at the end of this. Yeah. They could have very well just held off and just done this. Like, they didn't need to do this whole convoluted tournament. Yeah. Like, they could have just given us Braun versus Walter with a few-week build. They're just doing gimmick shit to appease the fact that Fox is the host of the World Cup. That's what this is. Yeah, it is. It it's is. a dressed-up way of making Braun a more contender eventually. Yeah. Uh, then we get this pretend match that was supposedly going to happen between Zelina and BFAB. Thank God it doesn't. Um, <laughs> I mean, I can... they purposely gave Legato Zelina instead of Carmen San Diego so that they would have someone who could work working BFAB. But except BFAB doesn't know how to work, so that wouldn't even work anyways. Listen, she's um, better than fucking stupid bitch. Have we seen BFAB actually wrestle yet? Yes. I don't know. Um, He's better than fucking Carmen Electra there. So as Hit Row it comes out and gets in the ring, we get the return of the Viking Raiders with Sarah Logan. Who and this is where I got called a white supremacist. Uh, basically, I'm surprised Ed has no reaction to that comment. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I, I'm having a problem. Well, it's a great thing. We've been saved. We have a little, little Nas X has appointed himself the uh, new CEO uh, of Twitter. And, um, <laughs> as of 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I will be relieving Mr. Musk of all his duties and taking position as CEO of Twitter. Only users who agree that I am cute, fun, and petite will be allowed <laughs> to keep their accounts effective immediately. <laughs> so um, just just actually somewhat important to interrupt your uh, show. Um, <clears throat> if you... Ah! Ah, hold on, I'm sorry. I don't know if you guys heard that. I heard you scream. Uh, oh no, um, something in the uh, in the this huge, huge monster boss uh, in the game just popped right on top of me. Um, it wasn't supposed to happen. Um, Twitter, uh, he's done something to uh, the um, fuck. just don't log out because it's it's affecting the um. To uh, what's that? The two stage verification. Oh um, yeah, that was doing that the other day. Oh yeah, okay. Good thing he, I stayed uh, logged in. Yeah, he. What the fuck is it called? Everyone's oh, they, gonna they're get turning off check marks now. Yeah, he he's turning off microservices. Jesus. Um, and that's part of it, I guess. So don't log out of Twitter if you have two FA. The microservice for it has been shut down. <laughs> Did you notice the- I I changed my fucking profile name to it with a trademark on the end of it because we couldn't have blue check marks. So oh, <laughs> because they banned use of all emojis that resemble a check mark because people started right, doing right. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they started giving everyone extra check marks, and then people started like, like, <laughs> oh, I'll pay eight dollars to fuck someone's life. Oh, Dev, oh, you saw the, the the stock market for the Lily for the pharmaceutical company, uh-huh. and and the, there was a, a natural gas company. They said that there yep. was cracks in the line. And, I just uh, love the I just love the fucking slash fit going on between Ben Shapiro and Ted Cruz. Oh yeah, that oh my god, <laughs> oh my god, fuck, it's he, just he, great. He didn't think. Th- See, the thing is, people think Elon Musk is some genius. He's really not. No. He stole Tesla from um, the actual creators. He didn't right. have anything to do with the process. He's not smart. He comes from money. He mm-hmm. wasn't like poor or anything. It, it's so right. ridiculous. So I'm right. sorry, I got off track. I, I no, apologize. no, but you're right. No, he because he took the money he made from selling PayPal and invested into Tesla with it, and then like got garnered some good favor because right when he did was when who killed the electric car came out that documentary right, yep, and so yep. it showed elon musk is like oh well he's a struggling entrepreneur trying to help yeah. this get off the ground, <laughs> ground and blah 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 and that's where everyone was like oh my god elon musk is our savior yeah and it fucking no. spiraled from there yeah that's what you know they i bet you those filmmakers regret <laughs> that right decision. because yeah. like i said he his father you know that he used to walk around with jewels gems in his pockets in his pockets and shit because his father owns like 
uh, an, an emerald mine or something in, in South in Africa. Africa. Yeah, he was right, fucking. Right. He was Afrikaans royalty, like the folk, right. the like the most racist people on the planet. Exactly. Yeah, that's it's yeah. bizarre that you know. But I just don't understand what happens to these people. Uh, I, I, you know, for me, if you, and it happens a lot with this. And oh, this is what I was gonna say. I'm sorry to go back to NWA it's for a fine. second. Go for with it. The, um, with the uh, with the the whole putting the belt on um, whatever Soros, um, Tyrus, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, for me, he's trying to do either one of two things. He's trying to destroy his company even further, or he's trying to attract some new type of fan, which of course would be the, you know, MAGA the cultists. cultists. Yeah. Um, and, and which would also destroy his company. Um, the Because for me, you know, a lot of people, Fox News and all of them, and I don't want to go full-blown political, but like you said, this is, you know, they put the belt on the absolute worst person in wrestling, period, yeah. uh, politi politically. Yeah. Um, the idea that he preaches about wokeness and everything like that. If wokeness means that um, I'm not, I'm against racism, I'm against homophobia, I'm against trans, uh, against transphobia, then call me woke all day, right? All right? Because they, they, people like Brontosaurus or whatever his name is, um, they they try to twist it into something that it's not, right. and that that's the problem that I have. Um, and you know. Politics, they often say, has no business in wrestling. And usually the people on the far right that work in the business are the ones preaching that. Yeah. But I'm here to sell a product, and I want the best possible people to buy my product. I don't want people that, you know, support fucking bullshit, lies and shit. If you're a transphobe or you're a homophobe or you're even the slightest rate, if, if you even suspect Back, if you ever said, "Well, what about the what about the riots uh, over uh, right. you know, <laughs> BLM?" Then you know what you might be a racist. So just stay the fuck out of my shows. How's yeah, that? exactly. Um, I don't need your money. Um, right. You know, I would rather be called woke, and that's not an insult. Right. So fuck you. Exactly. So um, that that was my thought. My thought process was he's either really trying to destroy this company so he can file bankruptcy, which he probably could at this point anyway, yeah, or yeah. he's trying to attract uh, you know MAGA cultists as fans to save the company. Right. One or the other. So right. I don't I don't know what's going on within yeah. his mind. And that takes us full circle to right where you're we talking about because the Viking Raiders and Sarah Logan came out and I'm a white supremacist. Uh, no, you know what? Don't... I saw you apologized. Yes, and you, you, uh, you know, he was joking, and you, you kind of did. I'm just, I'm, I'm chalking it up to you having surgery on Friday and maybe not having the correct, you know, dosage of pain medication because you flew off the head. You went from zero to 150. It's um, because that's not the first time where I've mentioned something about a different religion that he doesn't yeah. understand, and he's made an asinine comment. Well, so and, and, I've and gotten so tired that. of the asinine comments i get that but you know what as an outsider looking in i thought it was fucking hilarious because you know the, the way you phrased it the way you phrased it a practicing viking as opposed to like a norse religion type thing and everything yeah. uh, you know let the idea that she's pillaging i mean picturing her pillaging right ships is fucking hilarious if you sat back and i understand where your i understand right. where your mind was i get it i get it and i, I just I don't think it had to blow up the way it did. I would have left it alone if he didn't be like, well, all of them are fucking white supremacists. I'm like, no, they're fucking right, not. Right, right, right. Uh, I was I just, that's what I was just like, you're yeah. insulting a lot of my fucking friends right now. And like, yeah. none of them are racist whatsoever. Yeah, well. Well, her, her, her specifically, we we can uh, right we can but debate so about what they didn't <laughs> what they didn't learn in that aspect was that there's there they what they did was they took the Venn Venn diagram and only focused on the sliver and not the fact that there's parts of the Venn diagram that don't touch. Right, right. There's people that practice Norse tradition that are not MAGA cultists. There's people that practice Norse that are not white supremacists. There's people that are MAGA that aren't white supremacists. Somehow. Well, I, 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 I like it somehow. We all, yeah, we, all, we, we all recognize that it, it, it's just been co-opted by white supremacists. Yes, exactly. You know, they, they're not all white supremacists. Right. So I, I, I understand that. And I respect but yeah. that. And, you know, I, but yeah. And it's like, I don't give a fuck about Sarah Logan's politics or whatever, but I like for like, I've known Hanson and Roe a long ass time and i know they're they're, they're not racists yeah well, like that's if she is or not i don't fucking care it doesn't change the fact that she was not not only did like 
her and Ray have been practicing th this lifestyle for years, but she did. She was dressed up as this gimmick at the Rumble two years ago before Maxie and Paler ever started doing it. So See, that's the problem. <laughs> And yeah, I like no, Maxie Impaler. I really right. like Max. Like, but no one should know that off the top of their head. So <laughs> you have a mental. There's something mentally ill with you. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I, I I expect you guys to fix that, or if you haven't already, because like I said, I haven't been in the chat yet. Um, but, I haven't either. I I I had it muted for 24 hours, so I think the mute comes off in like five minutes. Okay, poor, poor, <laughs> poor Katie's like, what the fuck is going on? No, the I thing is, I, I was putting the loop into all this before the show started, so it's okay. Oh, okay, yeah. all right, all right, yeah, good. Yeah, no, I, 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 like, let them know and shit, like, when we were first getting ready to go, and I'm like, yeah, this, so this happened. <laughs> okay, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was, but, you know, it, uh, I'm going to stand by my assessment. You went, you went from zero to 150, like, without even a, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, I was like, let me bring him some pain medication. Um, <laughs> for those of you listening, he, he just had surgery on Friday. Yeah, so I that, did. That's the that's the that was that was my thinking. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm I'm sure it's all. Yeah. Uh, no, cool. it's just remember 50, how we said like number fifty. What? Yes, number, yes 50. number fifty. Yeah, remember how we said like that person's turning into the new Pinky? Like that was one of the moments where they got Pinkyish, and that's why I just said, <laughs> that's why I went zero to one fifty. I just got a I just got a uh, message from Pinky asking me if I want to go live. I'm like, what? He's he's laying in bed. Like, why? Oh, jeez. <laughs> I, mean, I love Pinky. Don't anybody get the wrong impression? But uh, Pinky, uh, Pinky's uh, going through some medical crises at the moment, yeah. and uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. Uh, I am trying to be there for him. But unfortunately, I'm doing the show. Well, not unfortunately. Unfortunately, I can't be there with him. Is he still I'm doing in the, the facility show. or is he home? No, he's been, he's home. Um, okay. I believe he saw his, I think that's why he probably wants to talk to me on live. I believe he went to see his first, uh, I don't know if I should, I'm speaking out of turn, but he, I'm sure he told, he went to see his first neurologist uh, today okay. um, outside of the place. And, um, you know, I mean, without saying what the issue is, there's, uh, I don't think he's publicly, I don't know if he has posted it up. I don't think he has. Yeah. They're, uh, they're, they're, but they're, they've made such advances and they've caught it so early. Um, that's good. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure okay. that it'll be fine. So as soon as I get an update with him, I'll let you guys know. Cool, appreciate it. Okay, yeah. let's get back to wrapping this the thing up so we can get we can further along. <laughs> okay. All right, it's all I'll good. be right back. I have to turn my fan on. It's actually getting hot. I close the windows because it's, it's supposed to fucking snow. What is this fucking shit? Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I, oh I, yeah, I got, I'm snow. 45 here. So oh no, it's supposed to snow. Yeah. So oh geez, up to, up to right. two inches. Oh geez, let's uh, let's let's uh, wrap up. Let let's finish uh, SmackDown and get on to sure. what we need to. Uh, so just to wrap up SmackDown. Bro Bloodline was in the ring to close the show. They got interrupted by the Brawling Brutes, um, and they attacked Bloodline. But obviously it was four on three. So who comes out? It Drew McIntyre. Which yeah, uh, eh. even see odds and they brawl as they go off the air. So basically. Um, that might be our second war games match. That might be the men's war game. I match. feel so. People were saying that Kevin Owens was supposed to be part of it, which I don't see. But so I see the men's war games. I see is Kofi, Xavier, Sheamus, Ridge, and Drew. That's my guess. Okay. Versus the ball. Um, so to recap, just how we've set things up: the World Cup, the SmackDown World Cup. The other two first round matches that are going to be coming up uh, this coming Friday: Sammy Zayn versus Ricochet, and then Butch taking on originally Rey Mysterio. However, Rey was in a walking boot backstage at SmackDown, and before SmackDown went on the air this past Friday, they replaced Rey Mysterio with Mustafa Ali. So it'll be Ali against Butch and the other quarterfinal match. Um, also on the injury front, like uh, Ed had referenced earlier, KO strained M uh, excuse me, a MCL sprain is what they're calling it right now. Mm -hmm. uh, the prognosis is six to eight weeks out of action. So back in time, hypothetically for the rumble, but obviously this means he'll miss a survivor series um, and probably be out until like a week or two before the rumble is what it yeah. looks like. Yeah. Um, so obviously that, puts a damper on things for him. I mean, at least he gets to spend Christmas at home with the kids. Correct. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Um, oh, so, and I'm sure this is something that uh, Ed would chime in. That perfect timing, because I thought you might want to chime in on something like this. Um, so over the weekend at a live event, 
I, I don't remember exactly which live event. A bunch of wrestlers didn't get paid? Yes, I know. <laughs> that go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was New York. <laughs> I know. Okay, don't go ahead, I'm get sorry. me fucking started. Um, <laughs> so... Cross was fighting Drew in a match at a live event this weekend. Kayfabe's alive and well. Scarlet was being Scarlet on the outside, and some obnoxious drunk female threw her alcoholic drink at Scarlet ringside and got arrested. Kayfabe is alive and well. And Scarlet just just played it off. Didn't fucking seem to have a care in the world. And yeah. Was it a glass or a plastic glass? So do we know? Uh, I assume it was a plastic cup. They don't Can. It. Yeah, if you're in an arena, it's either a plastic cup or at least a plastic bottle. But yeah, yeah like, but you know how mad you got to get to throw an alcoholic beverage in an arena? Like, them ain't cheap. Huh. <laughs> the, what, what show was this? It was just a house. It was a WWE house show. Oh. Well, <laughs> I mean, listen. <laughs> You know, there's there's two trains of thought here. Uh, 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 okay, so was she antagonizing the fan or no? She was she, just being a heel in the match. Yeah. So she was, she was like 1960s and 1970s heels so hard that they wanted to stab her to death. Yeah. Well, she's doing her job, but you know, yeah. I mean, the thing with fans is it's really difficult for me. Was it a cup? Did she did she injure her? No. It's it's still some type of assault. But I would leave it up to the worker. I wouldn't. I wouldn't personally yeah. say, "Oh, arrest the fan." You know, right. if that because that just makes me think you're doing your job so fucking well. Right. You know, you should be proud that that yeah. fan that fan just gave you a boost in credibility. Exactly. <laughs> you know, honestly, exactly. that fan helped your career. Um, do I encourage it? No, never. Um, was it a plastic cup? If it was, or a plastic bottle? If it, was, sure it was, yeah. And then I'm like, you know, I wouldn't. I don't think that's an arrestable, you know. In my mind, but I would also, like I said, uh, defer to the to the worker. I'm pretty sure it was just. I'm pretty sure Scarlett just played it off, but security was like, "That's it, she's out of here." So. Right, right. I mean, for all we know, maybe she was being an obnoxious fan beforehand, and it was just building right. up to that. And right. but you know, the idea the idea that fans should be throwing things at wrestlers is is a no no. Um, but you know, I mean, I think she just did some great things for her career as a heel. Uh, yeah, um, so, I agree. Uh, but you know, WWE is the, uh, you know, it is the top shit right now. So I, I don't know that. Uh, I, you know, I would have I would have to follow that honestly to see if they followed up or if they just, you know, for all we know, it was probably a setup. You know, and uh, you know, we don't know. Um, I I, I I would not encourage it at my shows and if if they did uh, I would probably uh, like I said defer to the worker but um I, I depending on you know if it was if it was a well drink for those of you that don't know well drink is uh, the cheap ones um, cheap liquor uh, I would probably kick them out I mean let them stay but if it was top <laughs> shelf I would probably uh, you know kick alcohol them out. abuse yeah exactly I'd be yeah. more worried about the alcohol than the uh, you know if it was a draft beer get the fuck out you know <laughs> uh, real quick uh, previews for Raw and Smackdown tonight not much announced for Raw uh, except for Miz TV uh, Seth versus Finn in a non-title match and Riddle against Gable NXT, uh, Indy Hartwell against Tatum Paxi in a singles match. The Dyad against Briggs and Jensen. Oh, God, this is where we get fucking Braun Breaker against Great White Kali. This correct, week, for the it? NXT title, that's correct. Uh. Um, da, uh, Apollo versus JD McDonough. Uh, HBK is making some kind of statement above their He's neck. going to come out and announce that he is the worst fucking booker in the company. That's your opinion, not mine. And then the last thing that's announced already, Mandy Rose defend the woman's title, the last woman's standing match against Alpha Fire. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but so it was this fan thing was okay. So they were ejected from the yep. show. They weren't arrested, arrested, mm -hmm. which is fine. That makes sense. But see, this is what I meant, and JJ agreed with me. Uh Scarlett is now using this um quote. As a classy woman from Chicago, I'm not surprised that something like this would happen in Peoria. Peoria. Peoria, yeah. 
Um, P.S. To the granny who threw the drink, your booze was as cheap as your hairdo. So <laughs> you know, she's using it to, you know, and that that I think is better than yes. anything, anything, you know, uh, as anything else. So yeah, I'm 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 glad. I'm 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 a little upset it was cheap, but okay. <laughs> So. All right, real quick, before we get to the main reason Ed's here, I have to bring this up. Okay. okay. Have either of you seen what's been leaked out today? Besides the Kevin Owens thing? No. Apparently, and I use this word very loosely, apparently, there is a run sheet that has come out that's supposed to show the men's Royal Rumble match. Sure. These things always leak. And Here's the right. rundown. So the rundown has Seth and Riddle as the one and two. Um, as far as interesting entries, it shows Carmelo at seven, what's still listed as an NXT town, which I'm sure disappoints Mr. Alexander. Uh, it has <laughs> it has Matt Cardona listed at number ten. There's no fucking. Um, it's got Braun Breaker listed as number 16. Jay White, yeah, I can see that happening. Jay White is number 17. Yeah, I'm calling um, bullshit on this whole thing. John Cena is number 19. It shows Cody is number 25. <laughs> and winning the whole thing. No. And it shows Brock at number 30. Oh, but it gets better. Hold on. Let me get rid of the scrolling banner on the bottom. Hold on. Please hold. So you can see the note on the bottom. Read the note on the bottom. CM Punk was originally going to enter as number 30. However, he was attacked by Brock Lesnar with three fives and was able to participate. Oh, shut the fuck up. No, never happened. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I got a good laugh at that when I saw it, so... Okay, number one, the offices already came out a while back and said there was never any plans for Cody to ever be pushed into that fucking title spot. Number two, we all know fucking Rock is fucking appearing and winning the fucking Royal Rumble. <laughs> like, he wasn't even mentioned on that run sheet. So I'm calling total bullshit. Welcome to the internet. Don't believe everything you read. No shit. All right, so... Mr. Wood. Yes. Would you like to explain this for me, please? Go for it. Uh, One moment. One moment. Oh, okay. Species Wrestling presents November to remember who the fuck we are. Because I just like saying the word fuck. Um, Black Friday night, November 25th, 8 p.m. in East Haven, Connecticut. Took you fucking long enough. What's going on? Well, you know, through a series, <laughs> that, yeah, we've had even JJ haven't been able to do uh, DPW for a while now because of surgeries back and forth. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, some terrible. Th I had had back surgery at one point, um, and then uh, you know, Smurf. Uh, for those of you that don't know, his, that's his nickname uh, for Matt Hack. He uh, he had a baby. Um, so he wasn't going to make himself readily available. Um, uh, Mike Roch, the face of the company, um, of course, he had his wife passed away. But even before then, he had had a surgery, which I'm not going to go into because it's not my place. But um, there were concerns about his health. So uh, he did what he had to do. Um, so and then, of course, when we were ready to run, we were going to start. We had a, we, we still do. We have a venue up in Springfield. It's uh, for those of you that live locally, you'll know um, the uh, the male and female strip clubs are attached to each other. Um, and um, they wanted us. They wanted us to use their parking lot um, and we were ready to go. Uh, and then the pandemic hit. So that was another two years, you know, two years. Because yep. even after the government was like, um, yeah, you know, you can start doing this, doing that, uh, we still weren't, we weren't comfortable. Some companies were, and I don't, I don't begrudge that. But as you've seen, a lot of the bigger companies, you know, people were getting sick right after the shows, even the workers. Uh -huh. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm overly concerned about safety uh, in a big way. But um, we, we finally, uh, you know, unfortunately, Mike's uh, wife passed away. Um, and, uh, he, um, he 
we we have been uh we we're finally coming back to Connecticut. We did a show uh, up in Canada, and we did a show uh, in um, New Jersey at our, at our friend's place. Yeah, um, uh, who we'll talk about uh, in a minute um, down in Jersey, like JJ said. Um, it's just circling. You know, we got fucked in the ass hard uh, because the heirloom. Uh, you know, yeah. they kind of went. They went belly up, and the church, who always hated us next door, they bought the heirloom. So yeah. uh, we got screwed on that deal. And we can't, we're not one of those things that can just go rent a pal uh, or, you know, an American Legion or something. There's a, there's a, um, uh, what's aesthetic. Of, yeah, exactly. Um, you know, punk rock type of, you know, vibe. Um, we have, uh, you know, our friends like two fisted law, we're doing our shows and everything like that. Yeah. And, um, then of course we lost big Jim. Um, but that's the type of atmosphere we go for, um, this, the barracks, uh, while not perfectly fitting that mold, anytime you run at a, a bar type of establishment, you're going to win. So, you know, there yeah. we are. so we are back the barracks. Um, I love that name anyway, cause you know, it's a, it's a pun, um, yeah. And uh, we're excited. And they have everything that we need so far as sound and, and everything. They've been really good to us uh, so far. Um, and I'm sure they will continue to be very good to us. Um, I encourage everyone to show up a little early and buy some drinks and, and support their business. They got um, a good draft selection. Yeah, that's everybody's saying it's a great place. I went down for the visit, but I didn't stay to drink. Um, if anybody's interested or coming up or coming across or coming down for the show um i am staying at the quality inn right there in east haven which is i think 0.4 miles from the venue um so you could drink and get back safely brian uh, where are you staying fuck <laughs> <laughs> um, so what we've tried to do is we've tried to stack the card um with some New York, uh, Mass, Connecticut, and of course, uh, New Jersey and Canada talent to draw um, all of you fans in like we usually do. Um, we're going to have uh, JJ on commentary for some of the, well, the, the matches. Uh, we're going to do a VIP for the VIP tickets, which are 30. You get the two additional, you get early entry and you get the uh, two VIP matches. One, of course, um, and JJ will be doing big commentary on this one, uh, is the Ascension Pro Wrestling Championship uh, match uh, will be on the line um, with uh, our good friend Bobby Ocean, hard-hitting uh, Bobby Ocean, um, and uh, a, a high-voltage um, Omar, Omar uh, who, you, you know, he has a fan page. The guy is really, really talented. Um, I'm glad to finally be working with him. We were supposed to do some work, a couple, like I said, just before the pandemic, but then uh, um, everything. I, I was unfor unfortunate. I, I was a little disappointed. For those of you that are in the know, um, he has uh, he's worked with uh, Ty. Um, okay, and, yeah. yeah, and they 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 look very similar. <laughs> that was <laughs> they, why they were tagging. Uh, yeah, exactly. And uh, that was the original plan uh, before, but um, Ty has uh, uh, currently in uh, school. And yeah. um, he's not available to do those uh, to, to to work. But I I did think he, um, I do think he posted that he would be returning um, sometime early next year to the ring. So I'd have to go and check his page, which I'm not going to do because I'm exceptionally lazy. Um, uh, then we have, of course, uh, finally getting to work with. Uh, uh, tech, I think is it Technique uh, Two Training? Is that the name of the school? Um, oh, T2T. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, T2T uh, uh, Academy. It's I, I for I think it's technique to training. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Okay, it's Logan Black School. Yeah, you, exactly. So Logan Black is finally going to be working with us, and uh, there's uh, there that school's um, number one student, from what I understand. I don't, well, let me not say that because I no one's actually said that to me, but we did ask for the best of the best, and we got uh, Angelo Carter coming in. Mm -hmm. um, you also get that for the uh, VIP show. Um, portion of the show. And like I said, those two matches in the early entry. Um, and uh, if um, the Money Dragon... Would you like me to run through your card real quick? If you want to do it, I mean, I, I, if you want to run through, I would just... Uh, I would like to um, 
of course, uh, to focus on, to, to, to talk about when, after you're done, uh, we can go into Matt Tremont and, um, uh, Tara Calloway. Tara Calloway and the, uh, food fight. Uh, I, I'd be interested in just having a short conversation about that. Okay. Absolutely. All right. So aside from the Bobby ocean HVO match for the DPW title, Another showcase match is a four-way representing Blitzkrieg Pro. Uh, Dr. Redacted, CPA, SoCal, and Kirby Wackerman. Uh, we also have Ichiban going against Hot Stepper. Uh, Tony Deppin against Cecil Nix. I can't wait for that one. Yeah. The food fight for survival. We can stop here for a quick second if you'd like. Uh, Gatton's Gluttons against Hungry Hungry Hendersons. Is that, <laughs> is that Kennedy Copeland I see on one of these teams? Uh, it's gotta on. be. Because, yeah, we, they keep adding to the graphic, um, so I have to check every day because, as you can see in the background, um, you know there, there's, there's more and more faces added. Um, yeah, yeah, I believe so. Yep. Um, I don't have the list of names in front of me right now, um, <clears throat> but I believe there's going to be at least, as I think three more um i'm not sure before the date i think uh for that particular match um if you have any students that want to toss their uh hat in the ring um message me and i'll see what i can do about filling a spot um for that particular food fight um which most people that rent their rings hate us for but what can you do what what, what can you do yeah, George. Yeah, George Gatton's got like a huge ISW following. So, oh yeah, he. Well, you know, he, him, and um, uh, you know him too. He was a student at um, Strong. Um, uh, Nathaniel, is it? Uh, um, he has the. Uh, he has. He used to have the Nintendo controller gimmick. Uh. I know. I, I just can't remember his name. That's all. I'm just asking you for the name. I'm yeah. not asking you for your opinion of him. Um, you know, him and Gat, because both of them started as fans of ISW and they would attend uh, shows. And then both of them started going to school. And now both of them, of course, are working as wrestlers. Of course, like you said, um, my Gat and, and I aren't as close as um, only because we don't talk as much. I'm not saying right. that. He have any disfavor um he talks to uh mike and uh smurf more which is right. fine um i just remember both. Gatton started off as a rep for combat zone and worked his yep. way up yeah yep he um the they um e even our announcer um i mean not announcer uh our our commentary um peter delong who's gonna be uh -huh. there you know he even started in isw um as as Glad just a yeah, yeah. Then, oh, yeah, then he became glad bad, and you know he he did some training, and then did the glad bad thing, and then uh, uh, so we, I mean, it's it's funny how our fans um, like uh, got and uh, you know they they we we get them so in, interested in the business. It's like you see in the documentaries when oh, I saw Jimmy Supervise Snooker jump off the top of the cage, and you know it's like uh, so I had to, and, and we we have those type of fans that just love 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 it so much. Um, so I'm excited. I'm excited for the food match only because, uh, I'm a big fan of my 600 pound life and, um, <laughs> oh, but it's going to be a killer match. <coughs> okay. So along, Eddie. along with that, we've got a uh, miracle generation against the air show in a tag match. That's going to be a show stealer. Yeah, I think you're right. I absolutely think that's going to be a high flying, uh, craziness. I'm sorry, I talked myself dry. No, you're good. Uh, then we got a false count everywhere championship match. Jeff Cannonball taking on Jeremy Leary. Mm -hmm. I always get hit in these stupid. Oh my god, we had one years and years ago, and somehow I was standing at the the merchandise table. Somehow I got kicked and knocked down, and had to roll under the table for protection. Um, it was it was batshit insane. It, it's just those so fans i have to tell you if you come you have to watch out you just have to watch out yes yeah. uh if you already mentioned this the technique to training showcase logan black and angel carter mm -hmm. and what else we got here uh, is he dead yet against austin luke mm -hmm. and i believe that's it aside from the 
fans bring the <laughs> plastic building blocks death match. <laughs> Because undisputed- copyright shit. Uh, <laughs> King of Crazy Championship, Tara Calloway defending against Matt Tremont. Yeah, for those of you that don't know, and uh, we we legitimately got a cease and desist letter from uh, Lego. Hasbro? Uh, yeah. Whatever, yeah, whoever, yeah. Um, not to use their logo anymore. So that's why we have to alter it or edit it. Um, it it's, I mean, what are they going to do? But um, you, you see, the, the thing is that these Lego death matches have blown up across the country. I cannot stress enough that we originated this shit. Yes, okay? yes. We created this shit. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I actually, just as a, as a joke, wanted to send um, WWE, I think it was like two years ago or so, you, you'd remember better, you guys, um, when they, WWE started using the interspecies uh there was some kind of matches they were doing and they kept calling them interspecies, the commentary team. Yeah. And I wanted to be, you know, that guy and send them a, a, yeah. a cease and desist just because they're fucking hilarious. And then know? they legit just use Legos in a fucking match on NXT like a month ago. And, you know, and it's, I, I should have fucking trademarked. I don't know if you can trademark a match, but I, I reckon it would have been. Right. I mean, because ISW started it and then Hood Slam started doing them and then like everyone jumped on the bandwagon. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, I'm just just so we're, you know, I have I I have I don't begrudge anyone, but um, there was I I, like Hood Slam. I have no problem with them. We have a close relationship with them. But there was a there was a company who was making it seem like, you know, they, it was the first time ever done or, you know, or something. I can't remember the name of the company. I'd have to go back and ask Mike Roch because he was actually, that was the first time we were ever annoyed that someone else was doing it only because they were trying to label it as the first time this type of match had ever right. been done. And um, that's a falsehood. We've been doing it for over a decade now. And right. um, it, it's bullshit that they, uh, they would um, imply that. But uh, that's going to be great because Tara Calloway is amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matt Tremont is just, you know, I, I, I love the guy. Um, I, I love what he's doing down in New Jersey. Yeah. Um, and uh, he's doing really, really well um, overall. Um, you know, she's coming as a champion and uh, this match is crazy. So, you know, it totally fits the King of Crazy type of, uh, of match that we're looking for. Um, I, I suspect... Uh, I suspect you guys should bring um, uh, uh, lots of Lego. Bring lots I of plan Lego. on it. I got someone who wants to get rid of some, so I. Oh say, no! Yeah. Is that a thing? <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, you know, in the past, just to give you guys some ideas uh, out there in uh, internet land, um, you know, people have made swords. People have made uh, uh, Star Wars ships. Um, you know, everything they super is glued them to wiffle ball bats. Yes, yeah, yeah, they yep. have. Yep. Um, they there there are tons of things uh that you could make and everything gets used. So however, uh, yes, I will stress this because I've been privy to seeing this. Don't be a dick, just bring Legos. There yeah. there was an incident at the Halloween show a couple of years ago where someone just donated a garbage bag full and they threw in like rusty nails and broken glass in there. And that's just a dick move. Yeah. Um, the, the idea that it's a death match does not mean it's that kind of death match. Right. It's, it's 100% uh, Lego. Um, nothing else. We don't need tax. We don't need anything else. Um, right. It's uh, it's Lego. That's why it's called a Lego death match. So you don't need to include any, you know, tax or anything like that. Right. And, uh, you know, um, it's it's going to be it's going to be bloody. I can tell you that much. I mean, well, yeah. I mean you know, our good friend. Um, oh, my God. I love her so much. Why can't I think of her name? Oh, my God. I just had it. in. Uh, in oh, my God. Addie. Um, Addie know, Star. Addy Star, she was yeah. doing the death matches, the Lego death matches forever. I miss and, Addie. Um, yeah, yeah, she's uh, found a new career. Um, for those of you that don't know, I mean, it's public information on her Facebook page. Um, you know, she's a. It's so it's so hilarious to me when I sit back and think, you know, you know she used to take Lego to the back and and bleed everywhere, and now you know she's a school teacher. 
Um, right. That's just that's just hilarious for me how people. Uh, I feel that. like I feel like Kennedy Copeland really picked up where Addy left off, though. Oh, I I would agree. I would agree with that. Yeah. Um, I I'm really excited. I mean, on our return, um, you know, we've really stacked the card um, to favor locals. Um, you know, our New York friends, since we're so close to the border, and our our regular long time long term fans. Um, we're bringing in our friends uh, from um, uh, Canada and up from New Jersey. So there's a little something for there, well, actually, there's a lot of something for everybody. Um, and everyone that's on the show, honestly, is a talented uh, performer. Period. Um, even uh, what's it, Ichiban. Um, yeah. You know, he's right here. He's from right here in Connecticut in, in yeah. New Britain. I mm -hmm. mean, if you want to see a big local talent and, you know, you live in Bristol or East Hartford, you know, that's the guy you want to come and see. And and everything I've heard, even before, uh, because there's a process. I, I try not to involve myself in the process too much. JJ yeah. will tell you this. I Even with DPW, uh -huh. I kind of just step back and let, you know, uh, JJ or in this case Mike uh, work because they have magical minds. They they it go it harkens back to the beginning of the show where I was saying how you know we get from point A to point B. You know I don't have that uh, imagery. I, I I watch like for me my favorite type of match is a com a good comedy match. You know I love a good comedy match that will make me laugh and everything. But there's people that would rather see a good technical match, a good high flying match. I love a good high flying match. Don't get me wrong. I love a good technical match. But my favorite match is a good comedy match. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, Mike and JJ, you know they can they can see you know point A to point B, and then what's going to bring people to the next show. So what's going to carry over? What's going to be the uh, the follow up? <laughs> I don't see it that way because um, my mind just doesn't work that way. Um, so I'll say, well, I want this as a one-off and they'll do it. Don't get me wrong. I generally get what I want, but um, not in any long-term type of situations, you know, um, with like title changes and stuff like that. You know, JJ will handle that for DBW. Mike will handle that for uh, interspecies because um, it's just not my gig, you know? Um, so when, when I say that we have this talent coming in, oh, uh, with, with Ichiban, even before Mike booked him, I had, no, even I had, got, I had put feelers out for the VIP show and Ichiban's name just kept coming up, coming up, coming up. And even before I reached out to the kid, this Ichiban match was announced because mm -hmm. he was already, they, somebody had already mentioned him to Mike. Mike already knew about him. Yeah. So it's 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 crazy how talented this local kid is. Uh, you should come and check him out. Um, and 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 the whole. Sh I mean, I've gotten two messages just today uh, asking if there's tickets left, and there are. Um, and there's both uh, general and. Um, but you know, I I get messages like, um, "How much is it for my ticket for ISW?" Um, it might be me and I, I'm at the name. I don't want to miss out. Are there seats? And I'm like, yes, there are seats. You know, there are. Um, uh, it's going to be a great show. I mean, it's good. It's one of our, you know, we're always in that position, JJ and myself, you know, we're always in that position where we're like, oh, this is going to be the best show that we've ever had. You know, we're, we're, we're just, we're, we're, we're raising the bar, you know, and you got to say it for like every show to sell it. But this time legitimately it, it's like, We've we've we're really raised the bar on our return to Connecticut, and uh, you know we're we're gonna put on the best possible show for you guys. You got my cripple ass coming out for commentary. It better be. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, interspecies right. wrestling, November. Remember, it's Black Friday night, Friday November twenty fifth. So next Friday night, doors open at seven. Uh, car starts at eight. Obviously. Yeah, the VIP option is 30 bucks. General mission 25. The barracks in East Haven, Connecticut. Tickets are available online. In interspeciesWrestling.com. I was just looking at that so I could see the ticket prices. So go check it out. Mm -hmm. There's also there's also a ticket link via their Facebook page, and there's a yeah. Facebook event for it. Um, just if you do the Facebook the page, media. Yeah. yeah. If you do the Facebook page, remember in interspecies, there's a space. I N T E R space species wrestling. Um, a yeah. lot of people do it as one word and it comes to another uh, page. That's not uh, 
related affiliated like, <laughs> yeah and then there's some car we might be putting together a carpool also if you don't drive um so we'll let you know if there's one coming from new york or canada or mass uh we'll let you guys know definitely uh, in the very in the next week or so i'm probably gonna come riding down with our third business partner <laughs> oh 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 okay Woo. I, I didn't think that out real quick no the I one know. that's still I, around i, I, I know i know <laughs> The one that was the boss that time, uh, the, the one that was the the, the voice of the the idiot yes. the whole time anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna go ahead and just assume my head who you're talking about and uh, move on. <laughs> um, that all being said, is there anything uh, anything I missed here, gentlemen? I think we covered the whole card that's been announced so far, and yeah, uh, yeah. just I mean we're we're coming up we're, we're coming up on it. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I, I, I was I, I was actually going to, I forgot fucking Smackdowns in Hartford this week, but I can't do it because I'm teaching a class Friday night, so I fucking can't go. I'm fucking, my, my, my fucking Matt James hit me up today, offering me tickets. I was like, fuck, I can't go. Oh, no. Oh, well. Yeah. Well, I have to go make money, so. Yeah, well. Matt James, <laughs> so. Spend money, make money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh. Anything else outside of ISW I've missed, JJ, or you think we're good? I think we're good. All right. All right. That Thank being you said, for having me. No problem. Absolutely. Episode 75 of White Heat. That does it. Presented by our friends over at Godzilla Media, sponsored by Mohawk Honda and Johnstone Supply. Special thanks to Ed Wood. Thank you. Thank for coming you. on the show, representing interspecies wrestling and We'll uh, we'll definitely want to do this again sometime, and th- maybe next time it's for a different show. Hopefully, intense. Wink, wink. Oh yeah, we're yeah, working yeah. on it. Yeah, we're, we are. We've we've talked about it, but you know, between the both of us, you know, you know JJ and I both have these health things, and I, you, I know. You, 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 ne- you never know when you know it's going to shit on us. So. Right. But we're working on it. We we have discussed it. Yes. I'm always keeping eyes and ears open. Anyway, so. Yeah. Well, you're nosy. That's why. <laughs> uh, and I gotta deal with this asshole with the sunglasses every week. So <laughs> at least uh, it's once a week. I have a, every day. I have to babysit him. Oh please! I get Facebook messages every day from this jerk off. All right, oh, well, that, it's not messages. Cool. It's fucking pictures and memes about different shit with AEW. So <laughs> I'm glad you get those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're not a okay. <laughs> uh, that all being said, I can't think of a better way to end this show than to have this happen. Uh, Ed, JJ, at the count of three, say fuck Tyrus. One, two, three. Fuck Tyrus. Fuck Tyrus. Fuck Tyrus. <laughs> <laughs>